Let's kick it old school. Yeah. Old school essentials. The further adventures of the thunderous Fury. All right, it is old school essentials. The further adventures of the thunderous Fury, session forty-eight. Time for the recap. So we started out at the uh, gates with the guards accosting us and waving our own wanted posters in our face. Uh, Remy, being the wonderful person she is, is, decides to see if uh, it would be better to turn us in and hire a completely different set of guides or stay with us. So she grabs a wanted poster from the guards. It turns out that uh, the following people are represented Felix Clintock, Orion, and Zofan, and front and center are Karn and Ox. They are supposedly black magic users of St. Cuthbert. Thank goodness that uh, Karn wasn't there. He would have a fit just over the description. Our bounty is 7,500 gold per person turned in, or 2,500 gold piece for associates. So Remy, being the apparently stupid person she is, decides that, no, she doesn't need an entire caravan that she can hire out by turning us in. And, well, so far, at least, has not actually fingered us for the guards. While that's happened, uh, we are being ushered over to the the local clerics because Orion has claimed he has a cough. So the local clerics ask, ask some questions, and it quickly becomes obvious that not everybody is playing along, except, of course, for our favorite Basil Wilberforce, who claims that, oh, yes, uh, that burning sensation with with IP, I I thought that was what you get when you become a man, uh, which is apparently enough to throw the clerics off completely, and um, they go to mix up some wonderful stuff for us. Unfortunately, downing the black trick that smells horrible requires us to take off of take off our various facial coverings, and the priest gives an awfully funny look. Um, of course, he hasn't recognized us. Of course, he's not going to turn us in. That would be, you know, completely against his principles. Hack, 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 hack. So we are directed towards one tavern while being told that there are one place, excuse me, place to stay at while being told that another one exists. Our favorite rogue, uh, Clintock, who enjoys stirring the pot a little too much, decides that he is going to give them a target to deal with, uh, rent some rooms, grounds up a bunch of homeless people, and ensconces them in the room with a badly disguised group name similar to Thunderous Fury. Lightning's Wrath. So Orion, being just a little more suspect, realizes that Basil W. is not on said wanted poster and sends him off to the general store for boot polish, etc., so we can hopefully change our appearance somewhat and maybe some various clothes. Basil W., of course, goes way overboard, picks up not only... Um, the boot polish and some clothes. He picks up some some waxes, some cloaks, some eye patches, a couple of wigs, and some uh, and some fabric dyes just to make things all fun. And apparently enamors himself of the lady because she hands him uh, she hands him over a book too just to tie him over. He also while there meets somebody he thinks he is part of the World Treasure Finders, who indicates that yes, indeed there. There are other adventurer groups in town. We go to the Iron Dog. Clintock pushes forward and, of course, in his usual manner, claims to be claims to be an important agent of the Amcor and, uh, and asks for their best room. And after a little bluffing, manages to get it. The rest of us, as it were, foolishly let Basil Wilberforce bargain for rooms, but indeed managed to get rooms at a slightly reduced price, apparently because the uh, proprietor of the establishment realizes that, you know, mud wrestling with a pig is a problem because only the pig enjoys it. But in any case, we do get rooms. We do get fed. Apparently, 
the local delicacy being lamprey pie. Of course, that's the local delicacy. In the meantime, Basil W. decides to blow most of his stash on a lot of personal services, gets a haircut, a manicure, a pedicure, and a massage all all at once. Because, you know, what's the crazy old uh, little town guy showing up in in the big hotel, of course, has to show off his money. Along the way, we had noted that indeed, Apparently, uh, the misdirection had worked, and the guards were thundering towards the other establishment to arrest a bunch of poor, unfortunate drunks. But we are trying to, or at least Orion is trying to do himself up as good black and make himself very different and make it so that he doesn't get noticed as the person on the uh, wanted poster. In any case, while we were there, Um, We meet yet another person who meets, mentions that there is a meeting of the world treasure finders and how they can always use new recruits and sends us us that way. Back to the general store pricing the various stuff and the proprietor Perexia says the world treasure finders are the suspect. The Amkur doesn't like them and considers them dangerous. It's the world treasure hunters who are supposedly the better organization, and there's a contact in town, the half-elf named Cornoa, located at the disreputable giant. In any case, of course, being the uh, mercenary people we are, we decide, why not? Let's find out about both of them. Uh, So the World Treasure Finders is apparently... Uh, to all intents and purposes, a pyramid scheme creating as an adventure group. The terms and conditions managed to turn everybody off except Clintock, who has already sold his soul. So any lesser entanglements are obviously of no particular concern at the point. You know, once you've sold your soul, everything else is just a minor little issue. We got to talk to the Kernoa at about the world treasure hunters, Basil Wilberforce once again takes the lead and talks to her and manages to convince her he's not a fake after quite an uphill battle, um, but decides that, uh, yeah, okay, she'll, she will indeed let us meet the rest of the group later, of course. We decide that maybe hauling around lots of jingling change is not is going to be a problem and go go to a uh, jeweler in order to change some of our loot into more, far more portable jewels. And I believe that's where we were. Yeah, you stayed at the uh, Iron Dog Inn, I believe. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was Lightning's Wrath that uh, Clintock was round up. He, he, he also round up one of the guys who got punched out by his friend when he was in line. Uh, in a reference to an earlier point in the game where Clintock started the fight. Uh, you went to the Iron Dog Inn. You stayed there. Uh, her name was Pernala, and she was a day laborer. And she definitely didn't believe you were adventurers because uh, Basil Wilberforce was dressed in his new duds and he just had his hair cut and trimmed. And she didn't. she doubted whether he'd ever been in a dungeon. And didn't <laughs> and didn't know what to think of Basil Bessex with his bedazzled uh, eye patch, and Clintock with his beret. So she just really didn't think you guys were uh, doing anything. And she said to meet later because she'll have some information. She definitely wants information on the world treasure finder person that you talked to, Marcos, who you stumbled upon at the Iron Dog Inn when uh, Basil Bessex was training uh, Orion and, I believe, Basil W. got involved in uh, doing jumping jacks as you yep. were doing training. Uh, you also ate at the Disreputable Giant, uh, drinking out of one drinking glass as he passed it along. Uh, a joke that I stole from a, a short uh, video called The Appointments of Dennis Jennings starring Stephen Wright. It's uh, the ninth day of King's Choice. There's snow on the ground. You guys are negotiating to buy all sorts of supplies because you're going to need a shitload of stuff to get 
across the the mountains are you planning on staying in twin rivers tonight again or are you going to go stay on the ship that's what wilberforce doesn't mind staying but his friends are kind of wanted <laughs> Oh, th that's right. Basil Wilberforce, you're supposed to pick up your clothes. You've got some nicer clothes that you're supposed to pick up from the seamstress later today. Yeah. Uh, because you had that service as well. He was getting a really nice uh, outfit to wear while he was in the city. And he's getting his like better, more durable duds to wear along with, you know, maybe getting the uh, armor touched up and, you know, yeah. get, a, get a good... Uh, coat of leather conditioner put on it you know yeah and you uh, sent a message to remy's father yeah so far the package is secure we have made it to twin rivers and so far all is well all is well except you know your your daughter is hanging around with you know the empire's most wanted but whatever minor issues minor issues okay Surely they'll forget about us in a couple of weeks. Somebody else will come along that's a bigger fish to fry, right? Yeah. Uh, Clintock is of the mindset to sleep on the ship this evening and leave the uh, planning of supplies to the others. He's going to give <laughs> like a, a bag of gold and uh, hightail it out of, out of town before he gets caught. Felix will stick around just because he feels... Like, nobody can recognize his mutilated body. Pranala of the World Treasure Hunters told you to come back later when it was dark. She would have some information about where you could find treasure. It was kind of behind the gathering hall. Uh, like she said, there's tents and stuff back there. Is that uh, still in town? Yeah, that's still in town. And Marcos, the world treasure uh, finder, said that he would pass some information off at the Iron Dog Inn sealed, I believe, in a sealed envelope to, to Clintock, because Clintock signed up. Yeah, we can move to, like, later in the evening. I, I would say that uh, you have uh, put in your order at the general store. Uh, it will take a while to collect all the uh, items and all the, the shit that you have to buy. Uh, Perexia uh, is ecstatic because of all of these purchases, but uh, she is a one person operation and she has to rummage through all the boxes to find various things. Uh, you got to just decide how many yaks you're going to purchase or and if you're going to take any retainers. We we go to the evening as um, it's still winter time, so it's like seven o'clock and it's dark past the gathering hall to like these tents. They look like fortifications now in the ground, uh, probably when it was more of a uh, military base to for like a siege or something, you know. Uh, they're just like concrete foundations that they've kind of put uh, like wood planks or just whatever they could find to put like a roof over it. And you see smoke coming out of it because they have small little fires going in there to keep warm. It snowed about three inches today. So there's fresh snow on the ground. And as you're walking through this, it's sort of like a camp. And some people have fires outside burning. They're huddled around. You can see as, as you walk into the camp, you're getting a couple looks. You know, people kind of looking, you know, they're obviously strangers. But they all seem to be in a pretty good mood. Because you notice that they are eating whatever this roasted lark thing, they're eating that. They've got, um, you, know, you see somebody with the, with eating the, the lamprey pie. Somebody's got a roasted goose that they're sharing with somebody. So everybody's kind of in a jovial mood. They're eating some decent meals. They look uh, very, very poor. Kind of coming out from behind uh, one of these makeshift buildings. You see Pernala again in her day labor outfit her cloak is you can still see it looks wet uh she's a half elf and she she kind of comes out uh you know eating some bread and it's like oh you decided to show good don't mind the looks i guess we do stand yeah, yeah. up a bit 
Yeah, a little bit, but not the ape empire. So it'll be okay. You know, sometimes you gotta uh, you gotta spend a little of the money that you make on adventures. Yeah. Anyway, so the information that I have, there's a lower river that goes south. There's some tombs and ruins down there, but they've been picked through. No, nobody's going to find anything. However, we got good word that the Ape Empire is hiding something not far away. Uh, it's some tomb to some concubine or something from uh, that uh, belonged to Rugoth. And uh, the Empire is kind of like... it. From from what I've heard from some of the people who've been down there working, excavating, that it doesn't look like it's been opened, or if it's been open, nobody's they haven't allowed anybody to go in. I think they're waiting for scholars to show up from uh, Brookshire or one of those big cities. But uh, that could be definitely an in there. So there's a map that has like the red mark on it. Okay, you see where Tr Twin Rivers is? Yeah. There's a river that goes south. It's not very long. That's where and she's talking other... about. Okay, down that way is where yeah. this place is. Yeah. Oh, because our pathway is the one that's heading southwest, right? Yeah, yours is the opposite. Yeah, you're going in the different direction. Well, it'd be nice to uh, be able to tweak the nose of the Ape Empire, but I'm not sure Karn and Remy would like the idea of going out of our way. Yeah, different direction. Oh, well. While we're here making nice with them, um, I'm just going to let them know what the guy from the World Treasure Finder said. I mean, it wasn't exactly much, but, you know, I'll let them know where he was and, you know, the fact and the fact that he was recruiting and described the people he had. I will, of course, leave out the fact that Clintock decided to join. Um, that's a little hidden ace, hopefully. But, you know, she wants to know about the uh, opposing group. I can at least give her a little intel, not much. Yeah, we don't exactly know a lot about them yet, do we? I've heard that story before. I, I'm familiar with their operation, but I'm sure he's staying at the nicest place in town. Maybe I'll have to go give that a visit at some point. Yeah, the iron whatever, as, a, as we the understand. The iron dog. Iron dog, yep. He's definitely there. I don't know how those guys managed to recruit. The terms I heard were nothing short of indentured servitude, almost. I mean, it's a nice con if you can make it work. I wonder if we could, you know, start some kind of competing outfit with Basil Wilberforce is a little bit impressed by the fact that they must have some members. Well, I mean, Ryan, Ryan's like, we can always give people, you know, maps for our previous locations yeah you know the underdark certain hobgoblin fortress hopefully now turned into a hook tar snack den um <laughs> snack den i mean when we left uh, you know there was a bunch of hobgoblins on that bastard and they couldn't hit him for shit mm -hmm. it was take it was taking them apart you guys are thinking small scale gear, um, <laughs> not so guided tours of the underside of whatever this place is in general. I forget the name of the the country or continent that we're on. East Anor. East Anor. The not so guided tours of East Anor. You can sell them to adventurers and to the local peasants. That's thank you for you. The not so guided tours. I like the ring of this. Uh, yeah, you guys have this discussion. A uh, an older human man walks over with a beard and a, a cloak and uh, trudging through the not really trudging through the snow. It's only two or three inches, but his feet are wet. He but he looks happy. Uh, he comes over and gives Pranala a big hug, and he's like, "Oh, the lamprey pie was so delightful. Thank you, my dear. Thank you, thank you." She and she looks. He looks at all of you. She is such a saint. I, Oh, bless you. And uh, my belly is full this evening. Thank you. And he he leaves. Everybody does seem to be feasting. Yeah, they got some food. That's uh, definitely lifted everybody's spirits. But, uh, you know, if, if you're interested in this uh, 
in this endeavor. I, I know I know a couple of the workers down there. We could probably I could probably get you up to the doors. I mean, I would definitely go. Unfortunately, not exactly not exactly uh on our path, but uh much appreciated anyway. Of course. Okay. Uh, it's just a half day's travel by boat. Oh, by boat. Yeah, I think Corn would really kick up a fuss, and so would Remy, wouldn't it? You know how that quality is. He's such a do gooder. It's only a half day, guys. And besides, by the time you get done unloading all of those yaks onto the boat, it will be <laughs> like a half day, anyways. <laughs> Are you saying we should go? Yes, let's leave tonight. Oh, leave tonight. Get down there and get back in time to pick up all our stuff. Exactly. That's Load into the exactly. boat. You never had to know we were gone. One hundred percent. Oh. Are you sure there's some good items, some good loot to be had down there? Yeah, from from uh from the previous ones that were ransacked, now that was like 20 years, 30 years ago, they were pretty good. We do need to get out of town aside to the guys, not to our friends here, but we do need to get out of town. It would be hmm, an interesting diversion. <laughs> As we oh, leave gosh. people on the boat to wonder where the track we are. Is there likely to be a lot of fighting there, though? You I mean, have you, uh, well, that's well, that's right. You've never been in a dungeon before. Yeah, uh, there probably uh, is. There'll probably be a lot of fighting. Well, I'm just wondering if we shouldn't maybe bring somebody along who's good at fighting. Okay, well, I'm, I mean, I'm decent. You what? You want to hire somebody? I, I'm good for a knife in the back all day long. But standing toe to toe, I gotta tell you, I'm not your guy. <laughs> I asked the guy how he plans to get out. I mean, just you know, not out of out of the tomb, but out of the city. Ask her. Yeah, sure. Well, yeah, we Ask can um uh, shipments and stuff come in all hours, so we just wait for. Uh, I mean, we're not. It's not like we're under waiting for an attack. They didn't really close the gates at night, so uh, we just, you know, take a dinghy boat out. We can probably get like a fishing vessel or something. I don't know. We'll find some transport down south. So we've got two roads, a barge, and. I'm guessing she's a elf. Fighter, she's a half elf or half elf fighter sword. You also have Felix, who's happy to come along. Yep. Oh, is he? Uh, <laughs> he jumps at any opportunity to get some more practice in. Okay. So we are, we do have a fighter there. All right. He looks at Felix. Yeah. as like, yeah, I feel pretty comfortable with him around. It looks like he's been in a scrap. I don't know about the rest of you. And she looks at Felix and says, do you vouch for these guys? And like, this one's talking about running at any side of danger. Uh, yeah, he's good for stabbing some people. Uh, okay. I would trust him if uh, you, you need him to hold a shield or torch or something, but. Okay. I'm a pretty good bone shot too. But I just like to get some distance between me and the bad guys before I take that shot. Like he's warning the new person, hey, you know. Right, right. Yeah. Well, she's looking at you going, he's full of shit. He's never been in the dungeon. I don't really believe anything he said. <laughs> of course. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean you're right. I have never been in a dungeon before. Don't expect much out of me at all. Uh, <laughs> you you just lead the way i'll follow if there's trouble you handle it okay so the only other thing you had to do uh clintock is 
uh, go by the Iron Dog and see if uh, Marcos left you a message? Uh, yeah, I'll send somebody in to grab my letter. There's a uh, a porter or a messenger brings you a sealed message. It's got a fancy little uh, wax seal on it. Look at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. It says, you know, it says, welcome, you know, to the world treasure finders, congratulations, da, da, da. and then written. So that's kind of like print. And, and he's written on there, Raga's tomb. It says at the top, there are three pillars and a throne where Raga likes to sit. Behind his throne, there are three doors. Choose the middle door, and then it and then it says forty nine steps down, eight feet up, and four knocks. There is a secret passage. Oh well, 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 good to know. And I shove it into my bag. Okay, that says good luck. Oh, if we got this kind of information, that might be worth it. Let's see if yeah, it except he's obligated to turn most of that money over on. To uh, <laughs> world trip. What money? <laughs> yeah. What money? That was, that was a bum rap that you gave us. Is there anything there? <laughs> 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 Ignore all that jingling and jangling coming from my backpacks. <laughs> yeah, really. Are you going to wait till like midnight to head out or are you going to head out like right now? Uh, I say once it starts to get dark, but before like the sun. Oh, it's definitely dark. Okay, it's like yeah, seven I'm... p.m. Yeah, it's definitely dark. Yeah, I'm fine for heading out now. Do we still have rooms? Did we rent the rooms for more than one night? Or no, it was just it was just one. You negotiated one night. So I'll take. I'll have to carry my duds with me, and then uh, I'll, I'll change out of my finery and into the more practical gear. Uh, well, I would say you probably meet up with Remy and Jalak uh, at some point, as I will say that Basil and Zofan um, are helping, doing their best, best to assist uh, Perixia mm -hmm. with all the, the stuff. And uh, Remy sees all of you and uh, it's like, well... Um, are you staying in town or heading on the ship? I mean, uh, we should be ready, uh, hopefully, by mid-morning. Uh, so should we. Um, we're going to make a small detour, and uh, we'll be back. Trust us, it's worth it. Okay. And then as we start walking away, I will say, and we're taking the boat. <laughs> All right. Uh, Jalak comes up to you as as uh, Remy is um, it's like she's writing a message or something, taking some notes. Jalak says, "I've met someone who has been to the tomb. If you wish to speak with them, they are um, they are outside the disreputable giant." Um, if uh, if you have any questions for them, I, I spoke with them a, a little bit, but um, they know who is in charge. But if you have any specific questions, they're still there. I, I did speak with them. Are they trustworthy? Yes, they are trustworthy. Uh, they bring supplies to uh, the lazy hair herd who is currently um, in charge of the tomb. They are entrusted by the uh, the leader who calls himself Yi Sitter, which roughly translated means the ice snake. That is a uh, <laughs> troubling name. <laughs> but he said that uh, Yi Sitter is, uh, has not been in power very long but he definitely favors strength. He does not look upon anyone who is weak. Uh, he doesn't look upon them very kindly and may challenge them 
in order for, in order for someone to pass. Uh, but we are not, uh, he does not allow any apes, but as far as I know, you do not have any apes in your group, but. I look over at my companions and go, you know, more information is usually better than less. Want to talk to the guy? Well, it's good to intel. Is Jalak coming with us or is there like yeah, Jalak, a... Uh... Jalak will kind of like, yeah, he'll go with you. Uh, just so you're not like randos coming up talking to this guy. Well, we would need a passcode or, you know, an intro, one or the other. But yeah, okay, that's fine. Yeah, he is outside the disreputable giant eating some porridge, sitting down on the in the snow. Uh, yeah, you walk okay. up to him, you hear the you hear the proprietor inside yell something in a glass break. <laughs> it's one glass. No, he can't serve anybody anymore. Somebody's gonna have a bad day. Um, and you see them both. Meet it. Uh, Jalak comes up to him, and you know they greet each other in Goblin. Well, actually, Basil Wilberforce would have some idea. It's a greeting you would do, you would use to someone who you believe is a friend. It's not like right. informal. And Grix, he says his name is Grix. He stands up. He's eating his porridge. He puts it down. He's you can tell this dude. He's like five two, but he's got huge, broad shoulders. He looks like a looks like almost like a bodybuilder he is big he says uh you th oh you're these are your companions yes i i appreciate you uh what you've done for my brother here jalak freeing him from the uh from his imprisonment the least we could do uh, jalak says you have may have some additional questions about uh Yisida and the 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 Inraga's tomb What's the best way to get in? <laughs> well, you just take the upper rock and and go about three days, and you'll run right into the tomb. It is is right there. It's you can't pass past. You know, can't go past it. Okay, now this is Raga's tomb, not the one where we're going tonight. Right? Is there anything worthwhile in there? Like I, we've heard that it was kind of pilfered already. Are you asking him that if there's anything worthwhile in the tomb? Is this a holy place for them? Um, some, yeah, it is like a uh, Raga is supposed to be like the patron or the deity that formed the four clans. So it is very uh, sacred. Now, what that means? You know, sacred yes. so much that we get to take everything that is in there. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So maybe I better not actually ask that question. Okay. Uh, who's there now? He kind of looks at you. He's like, "Oh, the lazy hair herd, of course." You said, "Uh, it's yeah. the uh, he has only been in power just recently." He uh. Um, he killed the previous uh, leader of the of uh, who was in charge. He found out that in order he found out that he negotiated to take over the uh, the tomb, and that enraged his sitter, and he killed him. But which clan is that? Uh, the previous clan was the Wochucks. Any other strong personalities there we should watch out for or befriend? Um, he is not a fan of magic or anything of the arcane. If you are a practitioner, I would keep that from sight. If he spots anybody practicing something like that, he is likely to become angry. What's his stance on druids? Stance on druids? Uh, those of nature? I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I guess if he would deem that uh, something from nature, maybe he would have a, I don't know. I've never seen the only, I, I, I just, I witnessed one group show up one time and some of them wanted to do some sort of tricks or something with, with uh, lights and something. And 
he became enraged and knocked him off the top of the uh uh where the throne room was which is a fall for of about 200 feet to his death all right doesn't like magic okay we well, can deal with that the magicians away we don't really have any magicians <laughs> i mean the bard you're the closest thing to us hey. I practice all natural magic. Thank you very much. You might not want to practice it in front of him. Seriously, Bard's pull from the druid list, not the mad, not the wizard list. <laughs> Which means mostly useless, except when I finally get to talk to a book carter and uh charm it into being our pet for a short while. Hey, that was not you. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Oh no, that 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 was a combination of uh charming it via song was just oh yeah, hobgoblins had a bad day. Yeah, very much a bad day. So the the young girl comes out of the door, like pushes her head out of the door and looks, and uh Grix turns and she throws him a piece of bread and he catches it. Thank you. And she goes back in and makes sure the door doesn't fall off the hinges. And he starts to eat his bread. As you can see that it's been like nibbled on by something and pieces of it have been cut out. <laughs> awesome. It might mean not to eat here again. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he wasn't what? bothered. Hazel wasn't bothered at all by any of that stuff. Kind of thing he was used to. I can't think of anything else to ask this guy for information without giving away the fact that we're trying to loot it. Yeah. How many, do you think live there? I mean, how many members? Oh, the the, the, the herd. It's usually uh, usually forty to fifty. If you gain his favor, though, uh, he could definitely provide safe passage for at least uh, five days of your trek. Oh, really? Yes. What is known to gain his favor? What does he like? So he he uh, eating his bread. He he looks around like you know somebody could be listening, but there's nobody out here listening. Or he would care. He says, there's a legend. Uh, there's a hobgoblin legend that uh, one of Raga's concubines was a snake woman. And uh, he uh, claims, as his name, the ice snake, he claims to have the snake blood in him. If there could be any type of Oh, uh, confirmation or something taken from her uh, existence or something to prove that she was alive or that would certainly gain his favor. This okay, like that's time. useful. But I wouldn't talk like that around other hobgoblins. They don't, they don't believe in the existence of this this concubine or this snake person. They think it's heretical. Well, aside to the guys, looks like we had a double reason to go uh, shake down the shake down the concubine's tomb. Easy passage later on. That's where that's. Uh, that's worth something serious here. Prove that the snake woman concubine existed. Like maybe an ancient book or looking scroll that would say it. Something that was uh, you could find something of her personal effects or something that represented her. I, I don't know. There are many tombs here. Most are are in the lower uh, Grogar. 
that have been searched, but no one has ever claimed to have found this uh, snake concubine. So that's the place at the end of the short river is the lower rock. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So when we're going there, we need to keep an eye out for snake concubine. Woman. Yeah, you get the impression that there are multiple tombs, like there's Raga's tomb and there's probably a shitload of other tombs, but... And they're all in the lower part of the river. Uh, do you, uh, anything else you, you need? You've done this type of, this is a very dangerous trek you're about to embark on. You've, you've done much adventuring? Uh, he's still <laughs> pretty green. I'll point to Basil. Well, you will not be afterwards. But you can tell by the parade that I've done my fair share of dungeon diving. He's not sure what to think of that remark. Uh, he's like, he looks a bit confused, like, not really. Does a beret signify? Yeah, it's <laughs> not his culture. He has no idea. Well, you've must have done something. You you freed my uh my friend here, Jalak. Oh, we've done some amazing things. Uh, we've arm wrestled and befriended dragons. We've kissed hags. We've crossed the Underdark and fairy itself. And he's going, what is this boy drinking? Um, I think you're supposed to leave out the part about kissing hags, but may I listen to me? <laughs> Well, she looked off. She looked awfully good at the time. <laughs> uh, fair, fair enough. Let's see. Basil kept his memories of that. He's like, "Oh yeah, you you kissed a hag and you liked it." We worked that out. He lost the memories that were in that were in Fay, but there was something he did. There was something he did. We started out with the hag, not in Fay. And I think that was the price of passage. So I think he remembers that. I think he remembers that first kiss. <laughs> because, but not what happened thereafter. Uh, Basil's probably telling you all kinds of lies about what happened afterwards. I can see yeah, him don't looking at you. You know, well, oh, y'all disappeared from hours what were you up to <laughs> right 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 the ryan's going <laughs> still, there. still there still works must not have done too much do you ever notice a burning feeling <laughs> hey we got rid of that at the temple <laughs> Uh, and when, when I mentioned like five days safe passage means like no random encounters. It's just we're going to say five days pass. Bottom line is we suddenly got a reason to do a side side quest there because it will help speed this up. Five days safe passage isn't even to stop at either. Sounds like it's a dangerous. Yeah. Area. Besides which, also a reason to uh, get out of get out of town for a bit. Rick's. Uh, Thanks you once again for helping free Jalak. It says, I, I will, uh, I, do you wish to have some uh, porridge? I will buy you a, each a bowl if you wish, if you are hungry. No, nope. I'm good. You know, I, I, I'm doing pretty good, but here I want you to have this um, because I think it's a suitable reward for helping us, uh, and it gives them about ten gold pieces. Oh, okay. Oh, I, I, I am, I am grateful. Thank you. No, no, you, you, you just gave us some really good information that may help us a whole lot. It's the least we can do. Ten gold's a pretty decent reward, right? For... Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, he's eating at, you know, he's eating at the poorest place. He says, uh, 
Yeah, so uh, I will be here for for a while. Uh, I need to go pick up some stuff at the general store, but apparently there's a few individuals down there who are taking up most of Perixia's time, so I uh, have to wait. But Anyway, uh, good luck to you in your travels, and Jalaka will see you, and he speaks to him, and Hobgoblin, you know, many blessings the gods give you safe passage. And, uh, you leave. Uh, okay. Am I going to go to Lower Vaga with this? Is he going to travel with this? Uh, July, I mean, it's unless you do you want him to go? Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know if he was. Yeah, there. Jalak is, is intending to head back to the ship with Remy. Okay. But is he also going to be traveling with us to the other rock, too? Yeah, he's definitely going. Yeah, because he's your guide. Once you get past the tomb, is he outfitting? Uh, in the sense that, uh, well, Remy paid him some money. He's got the leather armor that were on the hobgoblins you killed. He's got their gear. Okay, so he's got armor. He's got yeah. He's got some stuff. He's he's uh, he's got some equipment that Remy has bought for him. Is there anything he feels like he might need for the journey? He wants to add on uh not at this time no he's like i'm fine we'll just have to okay. figure it through for him we've got to do that before the next section figure out what we're actually getting <laughs> all right so you guys um leave the uh disreputable giant you can hear the proprietor inside yelling at somebody and uh rix is chewing the last of his bread and you make your way out of, I guess you're going to head out, get in your dinghy boat, and leave. Yeah. Uh, and Basil, you pick up your uh, your outfits. Yeah, I, I I change out of the nice stuff and put on the uh, other goods. Can I send those? Can I send my extra clothes and stuff back with Jalak by any chance? Well, you're going to take a dinghy boat to the boat where they're going and then you're going to take the boat oh okay yeah 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 <laughs> yeah so i'll drop off the finery and you know some of my extra coins and jewels i'm gonna put those uh, off with uh corn okay yeah the guards kind of you know they've got their torches and stuff and they kind of give you a look and as you're leaving uh there's a commotion down the street ryan feels decent because uh He's he's the boot polished himself into a different complexion and changed up his hair and changed up his clothes. So he probably doesn't look the same. And Felix doesn't look the same. Suntok's the one who's just like given the finger to fortune and fate there by, you know, oh my disguise is my beret. <laughs> uh, nobody I put on my beret and nobody will recognize me from the wanted buster. Uh, people that wear berets uh, always wear berets. And since Klinghog has never worn a beret before, it's yeah. mm -hmm. kind of like the people that wear fedoras. So you guys are um, getting ready to leave and the guards are kind of like, they've got their, you know, they got their lantern and they're trying to, there's some... The traffic coming in is not much at all. Um, there's nobody coming in. There's you know some boats, and uh, the guard, one of the guards, like uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys, yeah, just yeah. You need to check this out, yeah. And they're pointing over at the last light in that you can see, you can see in the distance because you know there's some lights coming from some of the the main hall. One of the guards is like, yeah, you guys can pass through. Yeah, come on, and he, then. The guard's like, yeah, what, yeah, they, they were calling themselves Lightning Wrath or whatever. Yeah, you watch this. And then you can see a bunch of guards are swarming the last light in, getting ready to, like, go in and storm the place. <laughs> well, you know, Clintock's tomb, if anybody can ever find it, <laughs> is, going to, is going to be named Refuge in Audacity. <laughs> so uh 
Oh yeah, meeting you at the dock, meeting you there at the boats is the half elf Pernala, and you realize she's walking up. She's got a shield and some plate mail on. The plate mail looks and the shield look like shit. They look rusty and like nasty. And she's got like a sword. She's like, yeah, I'm all right. I'm ready to go. And the guards are like, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Felix just says, uh, I hope you take better care of your blade. I, 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 do, I, I do the best with what I got, you know? I don't have much. I see the shield's got marks in it. It's it's definitely been used probably in battle by someone. Maybe her, who knows? Maybe tonight you'll be able to get some more and get, get it all probably stuff. So, yeah, you get in the boat and head over to your ship. Uh, it's a cold night. And uh, you get back to the boat. Muddy D and Karn are there hanging out. Probably fan friends forever now. Muddy D and Karn. <laughs> right, the, the grave robber and Karn. <laughs> Best friends forever. Yeah. I'm seeing well, this, it. Not. Yeah, this he, is our last chance to grab the paladin if we want him to come along. Yeah, the uh, as you get on the boat, Muddy D looks like he he, he He's got his feet up and you wake him up. He's like, whoa, whoa, all right, yeah, come on. Good, yep, all secure. Grabs his shovel. Good to go. Maybe we want to leave corn there. <laughs> Just up the river a little bit. It'll be a nice time. Just, um, you know, you can stay in your cabin or you can come with us. You wanted some night air. Up to you, corn. Remy's like, what are we doing? I thought I told you back there we're taking the boat for the night. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, that's why I came along because I wanted to make sure that it returns. Do we want to take Karn or do we want to leave him behind? That's up to you guys. It's up well, to Karn. Do we know Karn's attitude about tomb robbing? Even if it's the tomb of a, you know, her of a, you know, no good heretic. Um, <laughs> can you think of something that's to call it other than tomb robbing. <laughs> He's not that bright. He is not that bright. We're merely repatriating charitable donations. Well, this sounds like a good cause. <laughs> <laughs> We're returning capital to the economy so that it improves the lot of men. So Pernala gets on the ship. I mean, if you guys don't mind him going, Karn go. And uh, she sees Muddy, and then obviously Karn will show up. And she looks at Karn. She she about drops her sh her shield. She's a whoa, and looks up at and sees Karn. It was like it's like she gets wide eyed, and she's like, "Oh, I guess this is one of your group." Hmm. Maybe you've seen him on a poster? Uh, shit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've seen his ass, yeah. What's about a poster? Oh, uh, you have a fan club back in the town that we were just at. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, you could call it that. <laughs> oh, She's... very good. The, the word of Cuthbert is spreading. Perhaps I should go into town. <laughs> um... <laughs> I think they should probably be admired at a distance. <laughs> well, you wouldn't want to ruin your like pristine and prestigious like character. Mr. You don't want to have fans. You know that thing, never meet your heroes. It would be good for my brand to keep a distance. Cuthbert's <laughs> brand. <laughs> oh boy. Pernalo's yeah, look right now is like, oh shit, what have I gotten <laughs> myself into? Orion is just going to, you know, in for a penny, in for a pound. You know, hey Ruby, can I borrow that poster for a minute? <laughs> it's uh, like hold it up, hold it up next to his mug, and then hold and, and then 
look around and see if anybody else is feeling adventurous. He's not going to expose anybody else. But you know, if shit's already if shit's already blown, might as well, you know, if it's blown, might as well blow it big. Remy Remy hands you the poster. And Pernala's like, oh my god. Uh, okay. Uh, you know, I thought those outfits looked kind of strange. I, so are you the you the the these guys then? She looks around. No, yeah. of course not. Ba- Basil's like, <laughs> no, no, not us, not us at all. Guys are bullshitters. It is a complete and utter coincidence that we appear to be similar to those terrible villains who gave the ape empire such a black eye. Hey, I will tell you straight up, I don't need 7,500 gold. I could I I could get by with a whole lot less. You know, a thousand be fine. Be good. Five hundred, I could take that. Let's see what the let's see what the nice enterprise is. Yeah. Is this 7,500 gold? Black magic. <laughs> The M car will not live through this. Wow, he is for real. <laughs> oh, yes, he is customer's most devoted servant. And M Sato voice aside, just not necessarily, just not necessarily the brightest button in the uh, garment there. Well, but I have to give it to you guys. I mean, I'm no fan of the Ape Empire, so fuck them. Yeah. Barnes having a minor bit right. about it, ignoring you guys talking right now. <laughs> Wait a minute. Are we going to like be partly, we're going to go most of the way where we're headed by boat, right? Yeah. You, yeah. You, uh, it's like nine o'clock at night. You'll get there at like 2 a.m. It's like five, it's like five hours down the river. You see a few lights from the occasional house and then there's really nothing and she's like yeah right yeah right here and she you guys like pull up after like after like going like five hours i'm gonna pick up some stuff that uh she can use on the way because let's see um basil w when we sent him out to the store he bought some extra clothes and he bought some wax and of course he bought shoe or leather polish Mm-hmm. And I'm going to hand hand her like a rag, a rag and the wax and the polish, and suggest that she could, uh, you know, spend some time buffing up her buffing up her armor if she wanted to. Yeah, she's like, yep, and she kind of thinks he's like, well, I guess I'm worth twenty five hundred gold now. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as they get on the boat and he sees them doing that, Karn's like, oh. This is disgraceful. How did you ever let your armor get here? Give me that. And he, he starts helping her. Well, and she's like, look, I got to work all day. And where I live is basically uh, full of water half the time. And, uh, you know, and this this is like second, third hand. No problems. That's what, you know, this is why we, this is why, uh, this is why we helped her with the supplies, you know. Lauren's helping her with with it, like he's right, right, he's right. Active. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She's but trying he, to explain he, to you he, that, he, like, like, you know, this is not like her top priority. Like, yeah. like surviving is right. the thing that she is trying to do. Well, if surviving right. is so important to you, this armor is your life. It's the difference between your life and your death. Like, really? Just, this, 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 I mean, you guys have to put up with this shit all the time. Like, is he like this all the fucking time? Yes, yes. And by the way, um, just to speed things up, and since you know my joke about druid spells being shit is generally true, <laughs> but not particularly true, I'm going to uh, spend uh, you know crank up the dentures once we get on the river. And use the uh, control water spell to push us along faster to get there. 
Okay. Don't you maybe want to save that for when we're leaving, or does that work more than once a day? Well, I mean, I'm the only ma I'm the only magic user in this group. Unless we want to give some of the stuff up to Muddy D, but I'm not feeling that. And so I have the dentures. I've got a ring, which is a spell store, and I oh. can cast Control Water now myself as a druid. So, oh. you know, don't mind me. So we got, we got options. Yeah, so if you do that, it only takes like three hours. So, so it, it speeds it up tremendously. Uh, you have no issues. And it also helps because Zofan and Basil uh, are back at Perixia's helping with the stuff, and he's your navigator. Yeah, I was going to say, Cronala knows where we're going, right? Yeah, so Cronala knows where we're going. It's it's a fairly easy part of the river to navigate. Uh, Wes, give me a D12 roll. Seven. The dark clouds moving. It's about thirty degrees. There's like mix of rain and hail and sleet. Gross. Um, it's cold. And after about an hour or two, there's just there's really nothing out here. It's just it's darkness. The occasional light from a small dock or hut, and that's about it. And finally, you get to a place where you can see there's a couple boats docked, the similar size, like one sail uh one mass boats and there's a couple lights and she says yeah this is this is it right here it's about it's a couple miles in but we're right here let's so she has you dock the boat there's a couple places you can dock you dock dock at one point and uh you know disembark i would assume it's clintock felix orion pernala basil and Karn. Arn and Brutus Cromwell Ashford the third. Oh, the dog. Okay. So you disembark. Remy's like, okay, all right. Uh, we'll be here. Clintock takes off his beret and sets it down and says, I'll be back for this. <laughs> yeah, she takes that. She's like, okay. So Pernala walks you past like a small like camp. Uh, where you see some workers and um, she goes into like one of the tents and comes back out and she says, yeah, there's, she says, it's, it's where I thought it was. It's a couple miles down this path, down this path. Uh, nobody's guarding it. The guards are resting for the evening. So we've got till as long as you don't make a whole lot of noise and, We've got till got at least a couple hours. Still so. does the word of the day clang, clang, clang. Yeah, well. I mean she's in plate mail too, so you know. <laughs> Basil Wilberforce is going to uh lag back behind in the dark and uh cover the rear. Okay. So you make your way uh down a path. It's there's it's sort of rock, but more or less a swamp that has been that is built up. Um, the trees aren't very big; they're probably tallest trees, probably eight feet tall. So, but it's it's uh, you make your way down a path, occasionally going probably through a couple inches of water, uh, and you can see the the marks of where carts and things and people have walked through or gone off probably to relieve themselves or something. Uh, I'm assuming somebody has got a torch or something. Or a lantern. Yeah. To, yeah. A lantern. We'll say three turns have passed. 30 minutes down this path. Uh, with Orion's got a lantern. You come up into an uh, open area. Uh, you can see where a lot of the uh, trees and stuff have been cut away. There's piles and piles of vines and things that have been removed. And in front of you, you see two doors. They look like they're made of some kind of sandstone. Um, and if you, if you kind of get closer, you can see that there are two statues 
that still have some vines and stuff that haven't been all the way removed that are like standing like next to it. They're holding spears, but they look like snake humanoids. Somebody say something about snake people? And as you get up closer, we'll say, uh, you know, like 10 feet of the these doors that have been cleared off and uh, the rest of the walls you can see have been removed. It looks like some kind of sandstone or whatever. But these two, uh, these two doors, you can see that it's intricately carved, and they look like snakes and humans in uh, various uh, positions. <laughs> Is it possible? I don't know if I have anything to do this with. Never mind. I don't have anything to do that with. <laughs> I was going to ask you if you could, uh, if it was possible to, like, you know, do the pencil rubbing thing Etching. and get some of that and say, <laughs> hey, look, you know, here's the lower Raga's tomb. It's got this on, but I don't have paper. <laughs> I thought I remembered him buying paper, but I guess I didn't. I mean, uh, it's, it's a, it's a, it's, I would consider that a mundane item. So, you know, I could see you if you thought, your character would have it. You, you got it, I and mean, it's not. I thought I remember thinking that it would be good to have, but I don't know if I ever actually tried to acquire it. But I mean, yeah, if he's got, if he can, yeah. maybe he's got a couple of scraps of parchment and some. Yeah. Okay. Something, you know. <laughs> okay. Use a piece of the of a torch or something to, you know, for charcoal, and try to get the inscription of it. There's there's these things on the walls at this lower Raga's tomb. Yeah, so you go right up. So is that Basil? Goes right up to the yeah. door and he starts making. Well, I mean, he he's going to you know investigate a little bit. He's going to look around and see if he sees anything. See uh, if there's somebody guarding it or anything like that. Yeah. So the yeah, there's two statues. They the the statues stand about eight feet tall, and they are they're made of some kind of uh, stone. As you're looking, as you flash your light over like 10 feet from the statue, you see that there's an iron spike stuck into the side of the wall. And you see a skull. So the spike was driven like obviously through their forehead. And there's just like skeleton, a skeleton hanging there. What's left of it. Oh. And then as you kind of pan across to the other opposite side, past the other statue on the wall is the same similar thing. Clintonk will pick up a rock and chuck it uh like through the general area and see if anything happens. Uh where the skeletons are? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, it just it pings off the the wall. Uh maybe you hit the skeleton in like a uh a small piece of it breaks off. You realize now that the skeletons are blackened. As if burned. As if, as yeah. if burned, yes. Burned and staked to the wall through the skull. And just just to keep fueling the fire here, you know, mention to Karn, you know, obvious evil pagan rites. This must be a foul place that needs to be cleansed. Um, this is no shrine of Cuthbert's. Felix will use this opportunity. He has a skull sculpture that he picked up from somewhere. He's going to use this opportunity to like roll it past, like get up kind of close to the statues, like roll it past to see if there's any like uh, like weight, uh, like plate or sensor. Okay, a trap. Yeah. No, you don't notice anything. Um, the rest of the party wonders if there's any spiders nearby. Can't make an out camp without. Uh, you don't see any spiders. No spider webs anywhere, anything like that. Um, no. Darn. And before <laughs> proceeding further, uh, Clintock uh, pulls out his compass and like stares at it. <laughs> Is this worth it? Is this worth it? Love it. 
it fluctuates a little bit hmm. and points straight ahead through the doors. Well, uh, after you, Basil. <laughs> You're getting right. Orion, who knows, you know, which way the wind blows, goes, looks at both Basil and Clintock and go, gentlemen, will you please do the honors uh, of verifying that uh, this is not some terrible, terrible uh, trap for us? Orion uh, says, trap? What do you mean, trap? You just walk up and you open the doors, don't you? And he starts walking up and opens up to open up the doors. One door has no handle. The other door has like, looks like a brass snake handle. And you just kind of grab it and uh, starts to scrape and opens up. Say a turn has passed with all that investigation. You flash the light in and you can see that uh, debris and stuff from the outside. Like there's dirt and like vines have grown in here on this floor. Uh, it looks like some kind of stone floor. And as the light like hits it, you can hear a hissing noise and some some sort of creatures or whatever scatter. And they both go, like if you're looking straight ahead, they go to left and right, they just scatter. You can hear them on the stone. Well, it's infested with bourbon. Go fake. He opens up the door wide. Okay. And then ahead of you, it, it go it goes to the left and right, and then straight ahead is sort of kind of shrouded in darkness. But to the left and right, these walls have suddenly appear. They flicker with like a blue and green flame all of a sudden. They go up the walls. The walls are about 10 feet tall, and it lasts like six seconds. It's like, and then it's gone. Like that. Well, we're not getting anything sitting out of here, are we? <laughs> yeah. Well, since Karn has proved that there are no traps on the doors and no pressure plates in the first entrance, might as well uh, might as well wander on in. I actually figured he was the best one to take the hit if there was something. How long does it take for Karn to put up his uh, temporary hit points? Yes. Uh, technically, he's got to do it at the beginning of each day. Yeah, uh, he's got okay. to find whether he wants plus two to his AC or 1d6 temporary hit points for the day. <clears throat> Most days, he actually goes for the uh, plus two AC. Yeah, that's a pretty good one, too. Yeah. Like, if we know we're going into something, he's, you know, maybe he plans on the B6, but I think his, his fallback is just go plus two to AC. Certainly. Well, yeah, I mean, that's probabilistic, but it's still, you know, it's still extra hit point there. So, yeah. all right. So, once we're in the initial hallway, what uh, directions do we have? Left, right, fall down the yeah. pit. <laughs> Uh, like I said, there's vines and shit in this room, and it it goes about um, twenty feet, and then you can go left or right, and then or you can go straight ahead. Uh, and as you like standing in the center of this of this entrance way, you can just go straight ahead. And you see, there's another set of double doors ahead, and there's some murals uh, near the double doors that have been that are faded. Okay. So, like, can't see them at all or requires some time to look at? Uh, probably requires, like, you to get close and look at them. So Ryan will sort of wander over and, you know, it's, it's history, not exactly the same as Bardic, but, you know, something of interest to him. He'll go over and start scanning the murals, see if there's anything of interest. So you're looking at the murals and they're definitely faded and they, they depict a mummified serpent being interred by cultists. You would you 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 would instantly think cultists. They're all wearing like robes and shit like that. And the tomb okay. itself looks looks like it's got it's inlaid with gold. And uh you can see them with holding like looks like jewels 
and placing them in the tomb. And then you can see that there is some gold leaf script written at the bottom, written in uh, a strange language. Yeah, I don't have any special language, mm -hmm. so I wouldn't be able to interpret it. I don't have any language either. I'll look over at Flintock and say, yeah, looks like your kind of place. Uh, I mean, I haven't seen anything yet that suggests that, but uh, we're still early days. Let's consider like moving forward then, try and see if we can open these double doors. Would uh, Basil Wilberforce recognize any of these languages? It is kind of like crude goblin. Okay. And yeah, he's a fifth level thief, so he also has read Oh, language. yeah. So okay. So, yeah. So, yeah, you don't need, don't make a roll. Blessed be Serpent Queen of Night. Well, this is exactly what we're looking for. He tells the rest what it says. This is just what we were looking for. Yep. It will certainly help us if we can find something appropriate from here and uh, go to Mr. Ice, what's his name? Ice Snake. The Ice Snake guy, yeah. All righty. Forward, left to right, folks. All right, I'm going to say a turn has gone by. So that's five on the lantern. What would be six? One and two, we go left. Three and four, we go forward. Half and six, we go right. <laughs> Barn says, always forward, never backwards. <laughs> Felix says, I'm not sure about that logic, but uh, I'll agree in this case. Let's move forward. You proceed to move forward. You suddenly hear a grinding noise, uh -oh. and the ceiling drops a foot. And then, you know, dust and shit fall. Uh, Clintock is going to quickly try and see if he can figure out how to disable or remove whatever trap this might be. Well, find if there's an obvious mechanism to stop this. Uh, he does not succeed. In on that. Okay. So the ceiling was 10 feet, is now nine, and it stopped. What did Basil get? Anything? We're on a timer here, guys. <laughs> Do, do we find anything, or can we find anything? I mean, uh, if you want to roll, what do, uh, whatever that roll is. Yeah, there's a find or remove traps. I did not succeed. So what'd you get? 12. Okay. So you exam you you begin to examine what this is, and you see that there are markings on the wall. And then you check around the corner, not going too far, like to the left and to the right, and see similar markings. Um you realize that uh it's something probably it's some sort of enchantment and it probably affects the entire tomb or whatever this place is we're on a timer get in or get out and get out before you get crushed by the ceiling oh. well let's pick up the pace then shall we gents and felix like tries to charge forward through the <laughs> Wait a minute. Did he mention the markings on the wall? Because it may be we go be, we go past one and it fall and it lowers. I'll ask uh, I'll ask Basil since he sort of figured it out if there's any way we can you know spike the thing to slow it down. I mean, it looks like enchantment yeah. being. I can't see a mechanism for it, but you can see these marks here. And we saw that bright light. I mean, that says magic, right? Uh, yeah, not so hot. I'm not so hot with enchantments. People I can deal with enchantments, not so much. He says in kind of a hushed voice, so Horn can't hear him. Look, we gotta loot this place and get out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get the idea. The one more places we poke around, the more trouble we'll have. 
nothing to do but to do it right now. So, come, friend of Ryan. We won't live forever. All right, you come up to the. So you're going forward past the murals. Yeah, you come up to the double doors again. They look made of sandstone, and depicting carved in these are what you would say look uh, have. Uh, the outline you would probably said there was some sort of cultist but they're drinking something uh there's a large snake and there's cuts in the snake and they're holding bowls catching you would presume blood or something and you see them drinking it drinking harvesting and drinking the blood of the snake okay yep cards are opening okay. the Crazy. Yeah, current says infidels. You know, Ryan's opinion is more like crazy ass bastards, but whatever. <laughs> is right. there another inscription that we can uh, get uh, Basil Wilberforce on, or is this just uh, depict pictures? Yeah, it's just pictures, and there are two handles, bronze handles, that are made of snakes to these doors. Arn grabs those bronze handles and pulls the doors open. Okay. Uh, what's your? Is it don't don't fi, uh don't you have? A, is there an open doors check? There is. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Give me give me a roll. Fifteen. Table says three and six open doors. All right. Give it a roll. That's, a, that's on page twenty one. By the way. It so matters. one, two, or three does it right? Yep. Well, I got two. Yeah, it's a little bit tight. You can hear it and you know some dust and stuff come out. You pull the, the doors open, the lights shine in. Not even 10 feet in front of you is a black marble altar. What else is in the room? Uh from where you're standing, you you're looking, you can see what looks on either side of the altar. There looks to be these stakes. It looks to be some kind of it looks like a headless body is like chained to the stake. They have no head. They're just kind of laying there. The body, their flesh is desiccated. You can see on either side, behind the altar, you can see on either side, there's at least two of them. The foul place. Much desecration is happening here. And beyond that, beyond the altar, you can kind of see what looks like iron bars. Well, he's going to have to investigate that. Who's with him? <laughs> we'll need some light here. Quintog is going to search around the room for traps. Okay. Uh, a one, so that's a success. So, uh, Karn, are, have you entered the room? Are you guys entering the room? Yes. Or is Clintock entering the room, kind of doing his trap thing first? Uh, Clintock will try and and get ahead of Karn, but if Karn stops him and just like okay. barrels through, like I know he's not going to stop you, but he's just striding in there like it's normal. You know? So yeah, you don't, like you don't beat Karn. Stop like that. You don't beat Karn as we roll initiative. Oh, nice. Oh boy. So as soon as Carl walks into the room, ahead of you is a black marble uh, altar. It stands about four feet tall. And to the left and the right, now you, uh, as Karn walks in, you hear this awful noise of like wood breaking and tearing as whatever these things are that were spiked to the ground have torn off. And they're like a headless body, desiccated body with like it, that's chained to a stake. Uh, well, there's faded murals in the room, but you know that's neither here nor there at this point because we're in initiative. Uh, I can roll first. Okay. With a seven, I will roll. Two. You guys are up first. I'll say you guys can like get into the room. When you get into the room and you shine that light, how? What's the lantern? Thirty something. Thirty feet radius. Yeah. As soon as Karn sees them approaching him headlessly, he shouts out, 
the power of Cuthbert compels thee to leave this place and attempts to turn them. Ooh, nice. Okay. There are eight of them in the room. Oh, shit. <laughs> Second for traps. What a hell. Um, <laughs> you don't find any traps. <laughs> oh, well, fair enough. I rolled a seven, which means I can turn a one hit dice undead. What level are you? Uh, level three. They sort of give you, uh, well, they, no, they don't moan because they have no heads. <laughs> uh, you see sort of like their chains kind of rattle around their chest and uh, they turn and uh, they seem to focus on you where the sound okay. came from. Who's next? It was worth a try. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I could have used a better roll right then, but is there a reasonable cluster of any of them? Karn is in the room. There's like two here, two to the left, and then 20 feet on the other end of the room on the opposite wall is two. It's just like that. So there's like two right next to each other. Felix is going to try a tried and true classic. Light a flask of oil and chuck it. Hope you can get a tofer. Yeah. Yeah, give me an attack roll. Uh, 15. Oh, yeah, that hits. Nice. For five. Yeah, I'm going to say that when you came in, you're on the you're closest to the right-hand side. Okay. You hit both of them, and they're both kind of burning. Okay, cool. Um, you catch both of them with some damage. Their tattered clothes and desiccated body begin to burn. Mm-hmm. Ooh, maybe you'll get some bonus since they're dry. That'd be nice. All right, who's next? Why save it for the last? You know, let's let's do this. I'm burning out. <laughs> find, find me a target. Uh, some, one that isn't, by the way, on fire. Okay, you <laughs> can pick the one on the left hand, closest to you on the left hand side. To hit 14, does that hit? Yes. Okay, I'm just going to keep rolling and then we can distribute damage as needed. To hit 15 hits, that was the two claws, now the peck. <laughs> oh, you're, you're in okay. bird form, okay. I told you I was birding out, and that was a dirty 20, so that's three hits. Okay, so ro all right, roll the first claw. Okay, 1d4, 4, four ooh, 1. So one point of damage. Right, yeah. So second claw. One. Dirty 20. All right, roll the damage on that. That's a nine. That is enough to kill it. Okay. Uh, you can explain how this thing dies. Well, since my claws are apparently, since my claws apparently didn't do much, what actually happened is I walked up to it Stepped on both its feet with both of mine, hence the one point of damage to the feet, and then proceeded to peck it straight down the center, dividing it into two halves that separated. All right. Nice. That one is dead. Clintock, unsure of how much this will do, will attempt to shoot one with a bow, the one next to the one that uh, Orion just killed. Okay, very good. Does a nine hit? No, it does not. Okay. Swing. Just goes right past. I need to make a roll, too. Um, need a D6. I'm going to roll a D6 and see how many turns this lasts. Okay. <laughs> high numbers, please. High numbers, high numbers, high numbers. Six. Holy cow. Wow. Got an hour worth of bird. That's a lot of bird time. That's a lot of bird. That's a lot of bird time. We gotta get we gotta get done in here within the hour. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh because I mean I got a feeling the ceilings in an hour are going to be about 
three feet tall. Okay. <laughs> Basil W. Uh, he takes a clue from uh, from about the bow. You know, he's he he gets back out of the room a little ways. So you know, he always tries to put some there and then picks a target. If he can see the flaming guys, he'll try to shoot at something that's already damaged. If not, he'll just pick a target that he can see from outside. Okay, the room. So you can try to shoot somebody against a far wall. You okay. technically would be out of the room. To hit the flaming guys, you'd have to get in the room. No, no, no. <laughs> He's not going to do that. Let's not be silly here. Does a five hit? Uh, no. Okay. Um, I need those other dice. What do I do with those other dice? Orion had the uh, lantern and uh, it's on the ground. As he laid it down, I'm assuming he just didn't drop it as he turned into a bird. And right. you've got some light from the fire. Pernalo steps into the room. She'll go after one of the ones that Clintock set on fire with her sword. Uh, with a 17 and a mighty one damage. <laughs> wow. Sometimes you're accurate, but not very forced. So she kind of steps in and just takes a, you know, a swing at this thing. Like she looks surprised when she enters the room. She's like, she gets almost distracted by a giant fucking bird on the other side of the room. So holy shit, this creature, like I said, it's got uh, like a stink chained to it and it's dragging it. And it's got some kind of claws, but these claws, it looks like they've been attached or stuck into it or something. And these claws go and attack, attack the bird first. One comes up, will attack the bird with a, I think that's a hit. Yeah, birds on the AC 11, I think. Let me read. Yeah. That's, yeah, AC 11. That's four damage. The second claw attack is a sad, pathetic seven and nothing. So you take four damage on the first one. The other two come from across the room, dragging, will attack the bird. Five damage. Uh, 11 to hit. Four damage. Ooh. Four more damage. Not great. And the last attack is a miss. Thankfully. So there are now three of them fighting a bird. Well, there's one. Pranala fought was attacking one. One goes after Pranala. That's a miss. And a miss. Bird, Clintock, Pranala. Well, Karn's in the room. One will come after, come after Karn. In fact, those two will come after Karn. 19 to hit. Oof. Nope. Not with his plus two. All right. Nice. Uh, nice. 21 to hit. Oh. That's two damage. Uh, that's a miss. And a three. That's a miss. So, so two are on Karn. Three are on Orion. One is on Pranala. Another one will attack Pranala since she's standing there. And she, that ah, no damage. Nice. That's because I'm. Karn shouts out, I told you that plate mail was your life. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. All right. So it is the second round of the initiative. These creatures, you now that you see them up close, you realize that they have these like bronze barbs like driven into their hands, uh, somehow attached. Uh, and I will roll initiative. I got a two. I can do it. I got a two plus one, three. Okay. And was, that was Basil. Basil. All right, Basil and Mark both have a plus one. So. Gotcha. You guys are up first. Felix is going to charge and attack one of the ones that's on fire with a 17. Does that hit? Oh, yeah. Nice. Four damage. Yeah, that one, you cut a huge piece off of it, chunks it, and it's just kind of 
uh, it's it's using the the stake to kind of keep upright as like its leg falls off, and there's like this horrible stench coming from it. Gross. <laughs> bird time. Yeah, bird time. Well, apparently, uh, apparently uh, these guys don't like me very much because three of the bastards attacked me. Let's see how. I, let's see if I don't like them equally. Thirteen total. Uh, that's a hit. Fourteen total. That's a hit. Which is a hit. And I'm not liking these guys too much. And another thirteen total. That's a hit. Their armor class Alrighty. is ten. They're no defense. Okay. So the first claw is a four. Do it better this time. All right. Second claw is. A one. I had to open my mouth. Ah. And a peck is a six. Uh, and that's exactly what you needed. You kill that one too. This time, you know, he shreds a leg, but that that puts him at a disadvantage to hit the other leg with his other claw. So he barely nicks it. But the thing reels and reels forward and bends over a little, and so you know the peck goes straight through the back and it drops. Okay, now there are only two on you. There are six left. Suntalk is going to try and shoot one of the ones that's attacking Orion for a whopping total of an eleven. That is a hit. Shocking, but yes. For six damage. Yep, a big arrow slices through it. You can hear it go scream. Nice. Pranala will uh will attack the one that um well the one that went after her. And it had one hit point left. So she managed her and Felix managed to cut the thing down. It falls down and the the spot the huge like stake falls on it with a splat and it kind of a, a poof of flame come up yeah. and it's just kind of this burning pile yeah. of uh, grossness I can only assume the smell is just um, south fading yes <laughs> I got two dice out from Karn and oh Valley okay now. so Karn you got two of them attacking you and Karn gets a 14 that's a hit. He got six. And then Basil gets an 11. That's a hit. Which one is Basil going after? Uh, whatever he can see from outside the room, you said in the far wall. Um, yeah, they've all maybe... moved. They, they have all moved. Basil would have to step into the room. He would have to step in the room to be. Yeah, able he's, to he would have to be in the doorway shooting. Um, Let's see, there's what's left? I'm sorry. There's two on Orion, one that uh, Parnella is fighting, and two that Karn are fighting. Uh, he's going to go after the one that Parnella is fighting. Four. Plunges into its body and goes all the way and sticks into the stake and some strange ooze green blackish stuff starts to drip from its body uh i think that's everybody on your side so did that kill one of them no it's still up yeah i think that's everyone all right so we got two on the bird uh that's a hit four damage three that's a miss another 14 that's three more damage and the last attack is a 14 for max damage six. Ooh. As it's these things are just like. Yeah, I'm un, I'm going to be unburdening very, very shortly. Because that's 30 out of 40, and I can't afford to go to zero on this. So against Parnella, 17. What is their armor class? Does she have a shield? That actually is a hit. Yeah, 17 with plate mail, 18 with the shield. Uh, unless you have a negative with your dex bonus. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Damn. She doesn't seem... Uh, so her second attack in Parnella misses. She's like... She can see she is not... Uh, 
very dexterous in battle. <laughs> she gets scraped like across the face, all the way down her leg. Uh, that's on her. And then two on Karn. Uh, 12, that's a miss. A natural one. Let's find out what happens there. 43. It only embarrasses itself. But the next one is an eight. And the last attack is a three. So not have much luck with Karn. It is the next round. And I rolled a five. All right. Uh, one talk will go. No, I'm sorry, guys. Only three. All right. And win them all. They are going to continue to attack Orion. In the bird form. Oh boy. They get a plus two. Ten. That's a miss. The second attack is an eight miss. Three damage. And then the last claw is another miss. So they were just, they're probably tying themselves out. <laughs> wow. They could have taken me out, but. Yeah. No, they did not. One on Parnella. Eight. Ooh, 19, but only one damage. She gets hit again. Ooh, barely. So it looked like it was going to be a really bad hit. She just gets by. She's looking rough. Uh, we're going to find out how much you really care for this person. <laughs> uh, Karn. Uh, that's a miss, right? I got to roll like a natural 20, right? Miss 14. 18. Uh, so, yeah, those were uh, all misses on Karn. All right, you guys are up. I'm going to unbird. Since bird is on its last hit point. And do I still get an attack action or is unburding my whole? I let you become a bird and attack. You can unbird and attack. And unfortunately, I roll a six. So it's going to be six days before the. Bird is available again. Damn it. Damn. First six was great. The second six, not so much. Yeah, well, the first six didn't even last three combat turns. I mean, I've got it for an hour. No, shred, 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 shred. Not so much. Now that I have unbirded, um, I'm going to attempt to spear one of the bastards. And the 16 should hit. Yep. And... Three damage. Yeah, it goes right into it. Big chunk comes out of it. Flops on the floor. It's in rough shape. A couple of these are. They're still standing. Clintock is going to hopefully try and put this thing out of its misery and shoot another arrow at the one that just got hit. With a 13. Okay, so the one on Orion? Yeah. Gotcha. All right. For six damage. Uh, you can tell me how it dies. <laughs> the bolt just like kinds of thuds into the weird grotesque flesh and it just like stops wriggling on the ground and nothing particularly exciting. <laughs> Except that it's dead. But it is dead. We've got one on Orion, two on Karn, and one on Parnella. Basil's going to keep on that uh, one on Parnella. Fourteen. To hit five. You can tell me how that one dies. Nice. Um, it just, you know, it's mid hack or mid attack, and just <laughs> and, and Basil says, uh, no, never done this before. <laughs> <laughs> Corn's gonna stay on the one he's been hacking at. Uh, okay. I got a ten. <laughs> that that is a hit. Yeah, they are armor class is ten. I got a ten. It counts, baby. Four eight points damage. That one dies too. Nice. Yeah, he just he he just you know nonchalantly almost like steps into an uncut swing and cuts it in half from the bottom up. Carnella is looking rough, and she uh 
like notices it and takes her shield and she kind of backs out of the room <laughs> like this isn't good i think that's everybody right uh no felix hasn't gotten my bad go felix um uh, there was one more on parnella uh there's one on car and one on orion okay um charge up to the one on Arn. Actually, I take that back, Orion. Yeah, help Orion. Thank you. I was just, I was just thinking, help Orion. Karn's yeah. 20 AT at the moment. So 15, which hits, I'm pretty yep. sure. For six damage. Yeah, yeah, you cut into that one. It looks it's in rough shape. Nice. So there are two left. You guys did some damage that time. Hey, I don't know why my camera suddenly decided not to cooperate. But that's clearly a one. Well, I think it's my role, right? I can't. I really can't lose because I've got a plus one on initiative anyway. So right. it doesn't matter what I roll. But what the hey? Just for numbers, four now five. All right, you guys are up. So, Two are left. Attempt to stab mine. Survey says nineteen. Two damage. I scraped it. I scraped yep, it. It's still up. Uh, Felix just says, but like from the side, kind of behind you, says, uh, nice placement, but you have to put more force behind it. <laughs> All right, big mouse, show me how it's done. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Felix attempts to chop at it. So 17, the hit. Yep. Or eight damage. Yeah, you kill it. Woo! Huh. Cuts through one of its weird claw arms and through one of its legs, and it falls down to the ground. Yep. Okay, point made. Uh, follow through. Follow through. All right, one is left. It is fighting Karn. And Karn gets another 10. <laughs> Let's see here. Seven points of damage. It is still up, but it got badly damaged that time. Basil takes a shot at it, and he glances at Arnella, glances at her, looks over, see if he's talking shit or not. Kiss a 17, three points. Yeah, you shoot it and, and like, take its foot out. It, with, you shot it with an arrow, the arrow goes through it and, like, breaks its foot off. It's like, Tilted sideways. It's still up. Oh. Is that all the attacks? One top. One last arrow. Hopefully it doesn't. A 16. Yeah, it's dead. Had one hit point. Nice. Yeah, you can describe how it dies. Falls somewhere into its center mass and then like topples over onto Karn and then just kind of like slides off. <laughs> Yes, these um, creatures are all been taken care of. Basil looks at Parnella and says, uh, you know, you're looking pretty rough. You ought to drink a healing potion. Yeah, you you got one? Shit. Well, you came into a dungeon without a healing potion? Well, I think I'm... I barely have armor. What the, I can't afford that kind of shit. Oh, and he hands her a healing potion. He gives her a dose of it. He's got one with six doses, so he'll have five doses left. D6 plus one? Uh, let, I'll let you roll it. Oh, okay. Four. All right. Plus yeah, one. That, five? That helps. That almost puts her at max. Like, Feeling better now? Yeah, yeah. She gets up. She's like, doesn't do anything about the smell in this room. Ah, terrible. Okay, so I take back all the shit I gave you. My bad, my bad. Definitely, you know what the fuck you're doing. All right. He, he hands her another dose and says, put that away somewhere. You might need it. So he'll have four of his six left. Well, that's a potion has like that many doses in it. So in order to give her a dose, you'd have to give her the whole bottle. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I thought you were doing it doses, like each file had so many doses or whatever. Well, it's, 
I think what I had was like there was a potion and it had so many doses in the bottle, like six in each one. Okay. Right? Is that? Yeah. Okay. That was oh, my that, impression. Yeah, I'd have to so. give her the whole file in order to take <laughs> yeah. her. I couldn't give her one. To, okay, never right. mind. Yeah. Okay. No. So you still got five. <laughs> okay. She's like, I'll take the whole box. I might need it. Come see, come see me if you get hurt. I will. I will. Or Karn, you know, he can just lay his hands on you and feel better. He's got that magic <laughs> She's like, I've heard that one before. Yeah, all paladins have those uh, feel-good hands. All right, so you guys are in this room. Uh, all these creatures, these headless, desiccated corpses chained to spikes are all dead in the room. A couple of them burned up, smoldering. Basil W. is quickly going around the room and trying to uh, ascertain if there's Hey, anything that's going to give a uh, clue about what we need to take to get this five days of free passage and we came for treasure. You do see some uh, murals. This basically, this room is like a large rectangle. At either end are two uh, sandstone doors. And uh, straight ahead, when you walked in, straight ahead of you was the the, the marble uh, altar. And then beyond that are some iron bars. Uh, there are two, there are some murals in the room. And they depict what look like uh, you would assume would be these cultists slashing their forearms and spraying blood into bowls. What's behind the iron bars? Looking behind the iron bars, you see a room. It looks like the same kind of, uh, like as far as size wise, like a big rectangle. And you see um, there are some fire pits in here. It's hard to see how many, kind of looking the bars. There looks to be like maybe six or eight of fire pits with uh, blue and green flame flickering out from them. In the center of the room is some sort of uh, five or six headed hydra statue that sits in the middle. And there are three bowls at the base of this statue. We need to get to the bowl in the middle. Doesn't look like there's any way into the past the iron bars. Other than trying to move them or bend them or do something to them no i mean you try to like grab and see if they lift up they don't there's no door no gate or anything like that no there, there are look like there's any doors in that room against the walls uh in the room that you're looking into you don't notice any doors but there are two doors in this room on either end helix will go over and grab one of the Pike stake that whatever the things were that the yeah the creatures were on pull pull it from one of them and then like go over and start trying to like wrench on the the iron bars with it. the the stake you realize is like rotted uh, I mean the 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 thing and it just snaps in half against the bars oh okay is there anything like metal elsewise in the room they had chains attached to them that's how they were on these stakes that'd be the only metal thing see if i can grab a length of of chain and like wrap it around uh a couple of bars or just actually just one bar to start with one bar and you're pulling on it yeah and uh, enough to where i can get uh where more than just how long is the length of chain is it enough where multiple people could pull uh, I would say probably eight foot length of chain. So putting around the bar, you know, it could be like four feet or half okay. and half. Or okay. Uh, yeah, I will say, Karn Pranella, over here. Okay. Yeah, Pranella is like, all right. Yeah. 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 Karn's in. What's a Karn's strength bonus? Karn's got a plus one. Okay. It also has a plus one. So you're pulling on that thing, it, but it's not budging. We can use the 
wonders of leverage. You don't try to pull a bar. You wrap the chain around two and then twist, twist the chain slowly and it will bend the bars inwards because you're using basically Works port with the leverage instead of straight strength. Works with a wet t-shirt. Well, so it's a way of amplifying your. It's a way of amplifying your strength. Guess uh, some of us have other strengths. And uh, Felix says, uh, "Can we borrow that that spear?" You can but tell you what. I'm not. I'm not letting you borrow my expensive silvered spear. <laughs> To possibly try to break doors with it, but you can borrow my crowbar <laughs> as a lever. How about that? Uh, that'll work. That I can replace. Crowbar through the chain, twisting the chain to give you the leverage to work the chain. Felix will try to do what was described by. Okay, so yeah, you're doing that, and you see the bars begin to go. We start helping them. Well, I assume it was the three of you doing it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they start to do that. You start to bend two of the, yeah, just like that. And then you get another two bars over on the other side okay. and you bend that out and maybe one of us can slide through. Okay. So, yeah, you do that. Another turn has gone by. So the lantern has six turns on it. I don't know how long the flask of oil goes. 24 turns. Gotcha. I looked it up. No problem. Bend all that shit. And one person could probably pass through at a time. You, you go first, Basil. I'll be right behind you, Clintock says. I mean, I guess it is my job. He's the yeah. little guy. He slides right in. He, he goes in. Uh, Clintock will actually go behind him. He wasn't just All right. trying to push <laughs> Basil through. Yeah, no, I mean, Basil knows uh -huh. his way. That's the rogue, this is the rogue's job, man. And uh, Quintock lights a candle as soon as he gets it through and then looks for traps. Basil goes in the other direction and does the same. With a six. So if there are traps that are fine. Okay. There are no obvious traps, so Basil and Clintock both get in the room, so you're standing like right in front of the room. There's this five-headed, 15-foot tall statue. It looks like it has like five heads on it. Similar to this other room that there were the people on the spikes, there are bowls of flame. So there's eight bowls of this blue and green flame going in, and there are three copper bowls in front of you, in front of this statue. So two of you are in the room. Orion yells out, based on the murals, if you bleed in the bowl, something will happen. Don't know if it's good, don't know if it's bad, but I, I would suggest, you know, if nothing's happening, don't bleed in the bowls. If the statue animates, try bleeding in the bowls and see if that will appease it. Ah. Uh, anything that looks like treasure around gems in the eyes no it looks like the eyes are just like if there was if there were gems in them they're gone clintock is going to search around to see if there's a secret door in the room before that does not do it clintock and basil wilberforce are in the room uh, uh behind yeah. this statue as you go around there's an entrance way you look in and there's looks like a uh, a giant coffer in the back of the room. Oh. You hear, next thing you'll hear the grinding noise. <laughs> and the ceiling drops another foot. Plentark says. Uh, it have been since the last time it dropped. Oh, good point. Uh, probably about a turn. Probably about 10 minutes. Okay. Give or take. Sorry, I interrupted you, Wes. No, no, no. Uh, Clintar just says, uh, uh, I'm going to open this coffer here, but uh, I, I don't really <laughs> trust my my safety uh, so much. So if uh, some of other of you guys want to come on this side of the bars, that would be much appreciated. Uh, 
All right, Karn goes through. We roll initiative. God damn right. it. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll start off again. I got a four. Got a five. You're up first. So as soon as Karn steps through the room, the five-headed creature comes to life and you see it's it's it turns to a fleshy snake-like thing with five heads oh, Fuck. bring in the lawful good paladin along may have been a bad idea <laughs> <laughs> and now the eyes glow with uh blue quartz in them uh quick question does the the coffer looks like, does it look like it houses a corpse? When you get up to the coffer, you walk into the room, you look in, and it's like it, the top of it is some sort of smoky glass, but you can see that there is some kind of mummified uh, creature in there, probably a snake-like creature. Yeah. If I can, I'm going to try and get the, the top off of this offer i don't know if that's possible if it just like lifts off that's great if not um i'll try and do something else all right <laughs> in the middle of combat and he's and then <laughs> doing the loop. you uh so yeah the the coffer this this is like this glass smoky glass and you pick it up as soon as you pick it up you all hear a grinding noise and you <laughs> as the ceiling drops four feet oh fuck mm -hmm. The ceiling is now four feet high. Okay, so As what it, happens to this 15 foot tall statue when the ceiling's. Well, it's got long snake like heads, so it just kind of squints down. Okay. If that's a word, squints. Yeah, I'll take that. Can't do it. <laughs> ah, so we're, we're fucking crawling. <laughs> Not quite, but yeah. <laughs> we'll be crawling soon. Ah. <laughs> but but you know it looks like you're going to get the coffer open all right who's next am i going to assume that it's fairly dark in here because you know they've got candles but that's yeah how much light does this thing put out does this blue green flame put out um i would say enough you, that you can kind of okay. see, now that the room's only four feet tall so, okay, my question is, is fairy fire going to be useful? It says in low light conditions, if I fairy fire it, attacks on the targets gain a plus two to hit. Yes, it so will, yeah, it... because, the, yeah, that, that would definitely help you. Okay, so that's Orion's opening move as he is fairy firing the um, Hydra. Felix steps up to the opening in the bars and... <laughs> um, well, kind of squats over to the open in the bars. Uh, <laughs> and doesn't use fairy fire, but uses normal fire on the multi-headed creature. All right, what are you attacking with? Um, throwing a flask of oil. Does a 14 hit. With um, pulse through, so 16. Are you aiming for the heads or the body? Just the body. I'm just like trying to hit the... Yeah, you throw it, it hits by like the side of it. And misses. Damn. Oh shit. That's what Basil Wilberforce will do. He's running. <laughs> <laughs> Bingo. He's trying to get out on the other side of the bars. Uh, he's running out of the room. He's gonna try to get to the other side of the yeah, bars. Yeah, I'll say you can. Yeah. Yeah. You you <laughs> you you get out of the room. His idea is to get on the other side and put the bars between him and this Hydra and start shooting at it with his bow. So I don't know if he can do I don't know if he can do all that in one round, but that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to get out of the room and then start shooting at it with the bow because come at me okay. through those bars, you five-headed son of a bitch. And Karn will uh, attack whatever is closest to him. Is Karn stepping into the room? Well, isn't that what triggered everything? Oh, yeah, that's right. He is in the room. My bad. <laughs> the tin can is in there. So, yeah, you you can attack the body or one of its heads. I mean, what's closest to him right now? 
I will say you can pick one or the other. You know, it's there. You're it's sprawled into the room because it's had to spread out. Karn is hunched down. The head closest to him. Okay. He's gonna try to chop that sucker up. All right. Remember, remember, you get plus two. Seven plus two is nine. We get plus two. Very fire. Very fire. Very fire. Uh, I hate very fire. Say, yeah, I hate to say the nine doesn't do it. Yeah, I rolled a seven. Well, Pranala, she's like, holy shit. And she tries to step into the room with Karn to help him. Rolls a two. Oh. Uh, she's like, it's like, oh, uh, this is bad. Stand strong, be brave. Cuthbert will provide. Oh boy. Uh how many attacks is that? Is that everybody? So all my actions. Yeah. Uh you have to find see. out what this thing can do. Okay, so not sure I want that, but fair enough. Yeah, so we're gonna see. hate this. We got Karn and Pranala, and Basil Wilberforce is behind the gates. Orion is behind the gates. Clintock's on the very other side. Yeah, and Felix is behind the gates. Felix behind the so gates. It so it basically has a choice of going for Clintock or going for Karn and Gorala. Yeah, well, Karn and Parala are right there. Five attacks. <laughs> Uh, so it's first. So it goes after Karn. The first head attacks Karn with a mighty. I rolled a two on the die. That's going to miss. Nice. The second attack, that is going to hit. That's eight damage. Wow. Um, then, remember inspiration, but whatever. Yeah, you do have a hustle point. Uh, yeah. Uh, Hustle, not inspiration. But yeah, you might want to save it for lethal. You might want to save I it for that nat oh. 20 that I just rolled. <laughs> Maybe. So that's going to be, that'll be 15 damage. How about I use my hustle point? All right. Good choice. Hustle. Wow. I actually got Paul to use his hustle point. Holy shit. <laughs> All right, so that's a re-roll. So that this is the third attack, and I rolled a two, so you take any damage. Uh, Pranala is right there. I think the 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 NPC is probably history. Another two. Uh-huh. Uh, and that is going to be. Is that a hit? I'll have to check her armor class. That is enough to drop her. Oh. She's in play. How is that a hit? Uh, it's a sixteen to hit. Oh, okay. You, okay. You tweaked the die as you moved it. Okay. Um, no, I didn't. That was a. I rolled an eight. That's a bonus. It has a plus eight to hit. Oh God, damn! Pernala takes some serious damage and gets nailed by this thing let's uh we'll we'll do the initiative for next round i rolled a three you can see that you want me to go uh sure all right i got plus one i got a four plus one five all right you're up first uh clintock will look in the coffer is there anything of value first that's like obvious in the coffer looks like there are four green soapstone urns in the coffer if i can manage it shove them all in my pack this turn okay yeah you lift that thing up okay chuck it in uh, there. <laughs> and if i have a moment more I'm going to drop my candle onto the desiccated corpse and hopefully light it on fire. Yeah, yeah. You drop that, you grab them and drop that, the thing begins to burn. I don't know if that helps the situation at all, but... <laughs> uh, and I figure that's my turn. Okay. 
for that. Yep. Practical or stupid? Practical or stupid? Practical or stupid? Well, let me ask the question. If Orion goes through the bars and tries to drag Kurnawa back, you know, is this something that can be done in a single turn, sort of get her out of combat? I realize I probably can't get her all the way out, but, you know, get her out of hand-to-hand -hand with this damn thing. Yeah, you, you could pull her away. I would say I would give you a strength or dex roll to pull her all the way out. Um, what if Orin helps her? Helps him help her. Yeah, I, I I would say you and Karn could definitely get her out of there. You would you may be subject to an attack as in one or probably one or two of the heads may be able to get through those bars, but not all of them. There may be just one or two. As Karn's helping, can he be using his lay on hands sort of thing, or is that going to have to be separate? No, you're you're a skilled enough paladin. You you I, I'll let you do that. You could like do the lay on hands and you know say a prayer. Because right, I mean, he's literally putting his hands. Yeah, on. yeah, that that's fine. Yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of what I was thinking. Like he's trying to give her his strength and help, and he's just like sacrificing everything of himself to. Get a comrade out of death. Fuck, we're gonna lose our paladin. <laughs> oh no, we're gonna lose our paladin. Oh well. This is how paladins live, and this is how paladins die. <laughs> <sighs> yep. Well, I hope you've got I hope you've got the luck of the devil, not the luck of Cuthbert this time. But okay, fine. It looks like. It looks like I can do it. I will try to rescue Kornawa and maybe get killed. But what the frack? Lentok's in trouble, though. He's going to have to get that fastest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Karn, you're like laying on hands and helping pull her out. As he's dragging, yeah. Okay. So no check is required. Orion, you just grab her and Karn puts lays on hands and pulls her out. So she is back behind the bars and Karn is like right there, probably at the bars as he is. Okay, roll your lay on hands or is it or is it a pool of hit points? No, it's just two points per, I think. Two points, two per, points level. per level. So can you... Uh, decide how much that's going to be or is that auto it doesn't say i think that's up to you once okay. per day, a person can heal two hit points per level by laying their hands on wounded characters additionally a paladin of fifth level or higher may cure disease once per week by laying on hands okay i will say that you can use however many hit points but she you will have to use at least two to save her life i'm going to use um I've got six to give, right? Okay. So I'm going to give uh, three to her and three to me. All right. <laughs> but I may not be able to do that to me at this round, but. Like this thing got a hold. Her shield is destroyed. Her arm is bent in ways arms should not bend. Uh, she's, she's looking rough, but she makes it for now. Felix is going to attempt to throw another flask of oil at this thing. Um, but I'm going to attempt to hit a... Is it possible that I could hit multiple heads at once? Um, yeah, I mean, if okay. you throw it, yeah. Or an 18, a oh, plus two, so 20. So yeah, you like, it bounces off one head, hits another, and it, they burn. Okay. They appear to do no damage. Oh. Uh-oh. Maybe it was distracting, question mark. That sucks. Yeah, I mean, you'd think Hydra, Fire, whatever. 
Basil Wilberforce would see that he's seeing what's happening here. Um, whatever head might be closest to those that are trying to get Parnella out and be most likely to be able to attack, say, Karn, uh, he's going to aim for that with his bow. Cone high numbers. I rolled it. 16. So that's plus two is 18. So you shoot it and it grazes off the, the Hydra's head. Doesn't do anything? Doesn't do any damage. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Not going to get too many that high either. <laughs> So was that a technical miss or was that a that's requires a magic to damage? Uh, that is technically a miss. Wow, that sucks. Plus eight to hit. Oh, we are so effed. We are so effed. Uh, okay, plus so. Eight, plus eight to hit, 19 or better armor class. Oh, All right, yeah. So so has everybody gone? Yeah. No. Okay. So Clintock is in the back room. He's he's got he's just collected four uh urns and set the body on fire. Yep. You got Pernala out there. Karn is kind of like standing. Well, he wouldn't be. He's kind of like squatting down. All right. Uh where the bars have been pushed down as well and bent. Only two heads could get to you like through the bars because you're it's a small area. So uh I'm gonna say two attacks on Karn. Oh. And we will wow that's a four. Oh. That's a miss. And that is a hit and you take five damage. Now is it going to be this turn or next turn that he's able to do the three healing on himself? Uh, I would say next turn. The other three heads, since it's kind of okay, uh, there's not a whole lot. Turn and start looking into the other room because there's a fire in there. Uh, and uh, that's everybody. We roll initiative. Well, Doc, how good is your sneaking? I rolled a five. Uh, I'm gonna roll this. Hopefully, I... <laughs> holy shit, got a six. All right, you guys are up first. Uh, Clintock is gonna GTF the fuck out. <laughs> Your movement's what forty, probably. Yeah, you you are a thief. Yeah. Uh, you don't have enough movement to get to the bars. Okay. Basically, right to you. You can get like right to them. Okay. So uh, you don't need a roll. You you can kind you kind of maneuver around the heads, and can make your way into that room. And the next round, you can be out the you can be out the the bars. All right. Okay. Wait. Well, wait a minute. Is he within grabbing range? Oh uh, yeah, I would say so. Okay, so I mean, literally, I'm going to like see if I can mimic this. Basically, reach into the bars, grab his arm, and try to yank him out. Yeah, and uh, Felix will attempt to help you with this. <laughs> All right, you got two people doing it. You don't need to roll. You Sorry. pull Clintock right out of the room. Uh, leaving Car Karn still there. Karn's pulling Parnella and he hollers for Brutus. Cromwell. Oh, crap. I forgot about your dog. <laughs> and he says, Brutus, help me. <laughs> he's like, and he figures the dog can figure out that he's trying to. I thought we got Carmella out, though. We did. Yeah, but he's trying to get her away from the bars and out of the room, like. Uh, he's getting the dog to help him drag her. Gotcha. But, until she can get up on her feet and be moving herself. Uh, yeah, she is. She, she can get up on her feet, but 
She's not moving very fast. Okay, so the dog is helping her. I hope you are getting your shiny metal ass out. No, Karn Him. and the dog is helping her. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, we're getting the fuck okay. out of here. <laughs> like, All right. like, we're getting out of here. Karn is so you're like, laws. Karn is not lawful fucking idiot. <laughs> So Karn is like pushing Pernella's body. Yeah, I mean she's and, alive. like crawling through. She's alive. He's pushing her. She's sort of crawling. And Brutus is in front of her and he's like got a hold of like her arm or something like that. And like dragging her, you know. He's going backwards and pulling her out. <laughs> gotcha. All right. You pull Parnella. You and Brutus Cromwell pull her away. Everybody's away from the bars. There's like two of the the, the Hydra heads come through and they're snapping at you, but they can't get to you. And yes, that was a player exclamation. Fuck! A I, character ex, exclamation. Sorry, not a player exclamation. Are you that headed thing. straight out the door? <laughs> That thing is a shredder. Exit immediately. <laughs> yeah. I think that's all of our actions for this round. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are you going to like use your whatever turn? I mean, are you going to go elsewhere or are you headed out? Clintock is heading the fuck out. Uh, <laughs> so is Felix. Oh, yeah. <laughs> The, the ceilings have dropped six feet in a very short amount of time. Yeah, so you guys are just like hunched down, moving out of here. It's time to go. You go past the, yeah. uh, the black uh, uh, altar and out the double doors and outside. And you are uh, out of this tomb. You're standing there kind of like catching your breath. Karn looks at it and he goes, This evil, this evil must be taken out. Three or four <laughs> levels. And you guys are talking and you you can see the 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 whole you hear the whole the whole tomb <laughs> drop some more and loose to smoke come up and rock fall off. Maybe it'll take care of itself for us. Uh, make our way back to the boat is my idea. Yeah. Yeah, we gotta go look at our wounds. Basil looks at Parnell and goes, so, hey, we're gonna be going down the road and going on another adventure. You wanna join us? <laughs> she, she's like, her, her arm is twisted and uh, she's like, uh, hey, yeah, let me think about that. Uh, yeah, let me think about that. Like, sure, I, 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 I will seriously consider this. No, oh, fucking no. We'll get you healed up. We'll, we'll, we'll get you to see a doctor, and you know they'll set that. And by the time we get there, you'll be well. You know. In a cast, but it's fine. Uh, all right, so everybody give me a D6 roll. Everybody, okay. Uh, Three two. for me. Every player or every character? I'm sorry, every character. Every PC oh. needs to. Uh, Arn got a four. Two for Clintock, three for Felix. Okay. Basil got a two. So Clint talked, uh, the you see the you guys all notice the 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 temple or whatever this is, this tomb drop another couple of feet and cracks and everything shit breaks off of it. And in a crack in the wall, you see a five foot long pure white serpent slither right out towards you. Uh go as fast as possible. Keep running, don't stop. Keep that is going. when we will roll initiative. Oh, my God. But since it's a new round, you guys can pick who you want. I'm going to roll. 
I rolled a one, so anyone goes. I'll do it. Why not? I mean, I've got a plus one automatically, so that's it. So can we, I mean, we see this thing. Yeah. And I presume, I, I presume the guys yell, right? Like, yeah. what the? Yeah. Yep. Clintock just yells, run. <laughs> Clintock's run. Well, well, you know, uh, actually, wait a minute. This is one of those cases where I can actually use those goddamn druid spells. You have made a point that there are all sorts of vines and shit around here. Yep. Entangle. All plants present in a 20-foot radius area within range. Range is 80, so should be plenty. Okay. Bend and twist, entangling creatures inside the area. Save versus spells. If the save fails, the creature is entangled and cannot move. If the save succeeds, it has half normal movement rate. Okay. So save versus spells. Yep. It fails. And, it, and you see the vines come up and it gets entangled and kind of twists around. And you see its, its violet eyes staring you down. Kill it while it is held. You have one turn. That's a long time. Yeah. I mean, do we want to go ahead and kill it because it's held, or do we want to just get the fuck out of here? Can you describe what this thing looks like a little bit better? It's a five foot long, pure white serpent with violet eyes. Five foot long isn't very big. No. Ooh, let's take it out. It might be something special about it. Well, Karn, Basil, I'll let you go first on that one. <laughs> I mean, well, let me ask you this. Is this something that we should role play out or is it something that like it's held we can just hack at and take it uh, out? Well, I'm 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 thinking attacked. I mean attacked. It's held. You could probably just kill it. Yeah. Right. And even if it does require a magical weapons, several of us have them. Yeah. So yeah, you can just kill it if you want to kill it. Yeah, Karn's gonna kill it. <laughs> okay, Karn just goes up and whacks it. It is dead. Cuts off the head of the snake. Yeah, it's dead. Plantoic turns around and sees like the events that transpired and goes, "Huh, I guess we didn't have to run." Let's <laughs> let's let let's leave anyway. This den of iniquity has done enough damage to us for tonight. Oh, you, you don't want to keep the corpse of this thing? Uh, I imagine uh, this more than anything else signifies that we've been to this horrid place. Well, let's grab it up and go. Yeah. All right. So are you collecting its head or its body? What do you how, how tell me the collection process? I got a big ass sack. And even a five foot long serpent can be coiled up and dumped in a sack along with its head. Okay. So yeah, you cut away its uh the entang the, the vines to get at it and, and uh get to it. And you put it in the sack and yep. you make your way down the down the path, which is easy enough to find. It takes, well, it's going to take 30 minutes. So you're moving a little bit slower. So after about 20 minutes, I would say. It really uh, is. In the di well, in the distance, you hear us, you hear like a loud noise, like earth moving. <laughs> and uh, you're headed down this marshy area. And then you ahead of you, you see people carrying uh torches running in your direction uh this is where we step off the side of the path and hide 
hide in shadows. <laughs> yes. Get down on the ground. Yeah. Okay. So is it, uh, yeah. is it reasonably possible to like hide off the path here? Yes, yes. It it's sort of a marshy area. You can step off the path in the water and like hide in the okay. tall uh the you know the branch the branches, the, the bushes and the, okay. the reeds and stuff. Yeah. So for the two thieves, it's probably not a problem. Yes. The six. Felix will try and do the same, but clearly with less skill. What are we rolling for this? Hide. Hide in shadows, I assume, yeah. for yeah. Basil. For Basil, hide in shadows is okay. Well, you're rolling a D6. I thought it was 30%. No, no, no. Uh, I rolled a six percentile. Oh, oh okay. Oh, I rolled a seven. I never roll a. Nice. Okay, so the two of so that you see the two bolts out of the way. Uh, someone was holding a lantern to to move. I'm assuming that Orion had the lantern in his hand. Uh, yeah, that's gonna get that's gonna get dumped in a puddle right quick. Okay, is it a hooded lantern? Like you can drop the hood on it or is you know like a bullseye lantern or no something? it's whatever standard lantern okay. you buy in this system so it's probably not hooded but i can relight it if i have to yeah it's quick enough to you know douse it right yeah yeah at nighttime i mean you're going to see lights coming from a ways off of course they can see yeah. you a ways off. Yes. I, I will point out to Karn that they are probably innocents, but they're going, you know, but they may attack us anyway, so uh, um, you don't want to kill off innocents. Maybe uh, crouch down, be, be still. Over there. Trying to argue Karn into, you know, acting as stealthy as he can be. I, I mean, you know, Karn has uh, actually taken quite a bit of damage. He's not in the best of shape. He, he's not arguing a whole lot. All right, so what's Karn going to do? Uh, crouch and hide. Okay. Like, get off the side of the road and hide. Do his best. Okay. He, he's got Brutus beside him and, and uh, you know, down boy, he's quiet. Three, there's like three people pass you with torches running. They don't look like they have any weapons. They look like they're in plain, like working clothes. So they run past, they don't seem to notice you. A second group of about three people, same deal. Two of them got torches. We better, what the hell was that? I don't know. And they're running. And then trailing behind them are two individuals uh, in like leather armor with swords. Going, oh shit, I hope nothing bad happened. And they all run past you. They do not notice you. <laughs> Two guys in leather confronting us would probably, you know, <laughs> we could have probably talked them into, you know, so uh, better off going somewhere else. <laughs> you scoot back onto the path. I'm assuming light your lantern again. Yeah. Okay, so the total for the lantern would be 10 turns for this whole encounter uh, for the whole time, as it takes a little bit to get back. You get back to the ship, you realize there's like nobody in this camp. Uh, the flaps and stuff are open and like like uh, stuff's been knocked over as in they got, they ran to wherever, obviously you know where they're going, in a hurry. Yeah. You get onto the ship and uh, Remy is waiting, looks like nervously, and uh, you guys begin to take off and head back up the river. So I'm is gonna pull out one of these like urns and take a look at it. All right, it's like a green soapstone and it stands about eh, not too, not quite two feet. Uh, I'm gonna open it kind of away from me. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, give me a D4 roll. Oh, man. Maybe this wasn't the right thing to do, guys. <laughs> Three. Uh, you got to pop it open. Nothing happens. You know, I mean, you're looking away from it. You open it. <laughs> Nothing happens. Okay. Uh, with it still open? Yeah. I will like pull it closer towards me, still keeping it quite a ways away, and see if I can see anything inside of the the urn. You see an ambered color snake statuette. Oh, inside. Yeah. All right. I described. Uh, oh, let me go. Uh, let me take a quick peek at that before you do anything else. I might have an idea. Um, I'm, and obviously you can let me know. I'm seeing about Bardic lore, so I want to know what he's fucking around with before it literally jumps up and bites us. If I can. Is that, is that reasonable? Can I yeah, make that roll? Yeah, go for it. All righty. 1d6 going once, and it's a two. So these uh from what you ascertain are urns things that they would send with the dead on their journey they could so, be personal effects or items to protect them or items you know just all in they could be anything in there yeah okay well i will relay that to mr you know uh, loot ambitious there um, and if he wants to keep popping urns, well, I'll guard his back from, you know, a few feet away. Uh, I'm going to take out my monocle and take a look at the statuette and just the other urns before I open them. It's hard to tell. You're thinking that the urns might shield your, uh, monocle. Okay, but the, the urns themselves are not magical. Correct. And then the statuette that is in the open. It, yeah, it is. It is not magical. Okay, I walk over to Remy and say, uh, "I found these things. Um, I don't know what might be going on with them. Maybe you have some interest." You're gonna let the NPC open this shit. <sighs> uh, no, my character does not say that. It's just. Uh, uh, I will point out, uh, Orion will say, we know for a fact from our talks in town that uh, the hobgoblin ice snake wants a wants some sort of indicator that his, you know, that he may be related to this concubine who is apparently and was apparently a snake person and he's promising safe passage if we give him something so this would be a good thing to turn over for safe passage and i will look at remy and say this is why we went sideways tonight this is going to save us a lot of trouble when we yeah. talk to uh ice snake yeah this that's a good yeah, I, well, I figured that makes sense. Wilberforce would interject that goes, I don't see anything that went sideways. Mostly vertical. Yeah. <laughs> vertical, 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 vertical. Should we look in the rest of them or should we just not? I was deferring to uh, your wisdom on this matter. Um, you are the researcher after all. Yeah, I don't. No idea. I mean, uh, maybe we wait. I mean, we could. I we'll I mean, sleep on it. How about we do that? But I wouldn't want to give him something and and have it be not good. You know, kind of well, set him well, off. I don't know. The snake statuette is probably a good one, along with the story, of course. Yeah. Well, we got, I mean, I made this transcription kind of thing that shows 
These are the pictograms that were there. We've got our own eyewitness accounts and we've got whatever else is in here. Surely our word's good. Uh huh. So maybe we wait until everybody is uh, rested up and uh, before we start cracking other urns. Just a suggestion. That sounds like uh, not the worst idea you've ever had, Orion. Yeah, I didn't take any scratches tonight, but burned through some spells and uh, that Hydra was, that Hydra could have shredded a freaking army. Hey, he got Karn to burn a hustle point. <laughs> I know. No, we got Karn to retreat and hide. That's that's the amazing thing. Look, I mean, he's lawful stupid, but at the same time, you you've got to have something of a military mind and go, okay, I'm just gonna I'm gonna die for nothing here. <laughs> like there there was no there was no stake in staying around, you know. Right. Yeah, like he right. would probably die for a good cause, but like, what was the good cause for him? You're right, and we dropped the tomb on it anyway, so yay, it's dead, presumably. Either that, or the guys who were who are investigating the ruins are going to have a really, really bad time. Yeah, we 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 have completely and totally disrupted that archaeological dig, right? Uh, yeah, to say the least. Um, <laughs> this is why they were waiting for somebody to come in because they didn't want that to go. To, 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 to. Paul, give me a d6 roll. Six and eight. Deuce. So, yeah, you take um, Par Parnella, probably move her down below so she can rest uh, her mangled arm and hand in some serious pain. And the ship moves up. Uh, you see the sun come up as you flow as you uh, uh, sail back into the area where Twin Rivers is. It's still sleeting. There's a little bit of rain as you're coming in, and you know Twin Rivers is bustling. You probably dock your ship nearby. So it basically is a plan to uh, collect all your stuff and make your way down the river. That's the plan. Practically exhausted the uh, <laughs> hospitality of the twin rivers. So yeah, so the next time we can pick it up. Uh, well, at least we'll we can pick it up where you guys are. You know, picking up uh, Basil and uh, Sofan. Uh, Sofan, so so heading uh, down the river. Yeah, uh, right. these urns are probably going to take two slots a piece. It's going to be about resource management. Yeah. Does that, I don't know if anybody has, uh, anybody has an appraisal skill. I don't know, probably Basil or Clintock would probably know what something was worth. I mean, that would be reasonable. To assume yeah. For you guys would guess that statuette's probably worth about 800 gold. Oh, oh, oh. nice. So we didn't do it for nothing. Well, okay. We sorry, we still need to appease the uh, ice snake one way or the other. And it might be worth the eight hundred to let's see what's in the other urns when we're, you know, everybody's rested up a bit. See what's in the other urns and see if we can't buy them off of something else. Yeah, we'll figure out what we can do. Is there the equivalent of like gentle repose for uh, Druid and OIC? No. Oh, well, maybe we can add some embalming fluid to uh, <laughs> keep that dead snake. Because uh, like a white albino snake with violet eyes, that sounds a lot like an ice snake. I don't know about you guys, but. <laughs> that is true. That, that was why I was like, yeah, Barton's going to kill it. Hey, that look, is an we, we, we took these scribblings off walls. 
We've got our eyewitness testimony. We've got the statuette. We've got the snake carcass. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Muddy, if there's anybody in our damn group who can do embalming, it's Muddy. Muddy D. Hey, what you, I just, look, man, I just dig them up. <laughs> Can't you make it look pretty here? Yeah, we'll look around the character sheets and see if somebody's got like Tanner, because my character has minor as a background, not Tanner. This little quest is out of uh, a OSC supplement called Carcass Crawler. It's just a short little adventure. I was like, yeah, that's something we can do. We got two players. Let's yeah. just mm -hmm. have something, which I always worry about two players because. I've had things go sideways. Oh, <laughs> Players easy. get killed, and I'm like, oh, shit. But, you know, you get experience points, which is a bonus. Um, but I figured it had to be worth something. And uh, every every turn, there was a random, a random thing would happen. And one of them was the ceiling drops one foot. And I rolled that yeah. twice. When you go into the room with the, uh, they call it a hydral, I guess because it's a snake-headed thing. Technically supposed to attack as soon as the first person enters. But I was like, uh, there's the three bowls. And if you did something with the three bowls, it wouldn't attack. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it when the third person comes in. There's three bowls. So I was waiting and waiting and waiting. And its body had an AC of 17 with 45 hit points. Ooh. Each head was 15 hit points and an AC of 20. Ooh. And plus eight to hit and plus two damage. I mean, yeah. it, that thing yeah. would, in this system, that thing would literally shred armies. It was fire resistant. Yeah, it was. Right, it was pretty. We were... It was pretty nasty. And I was like, oh, uh -oh they're gonna. They're... But you did. You know, you bent the bars and went in, and then you went right to the coffer. So when you go to the coffer, what happens is. <laughs> the ceilings in all rooms drop 1d4 as soon as you touch it. Oh, yeah. And I, I rolled a four, and, and rolled, that's how we got to four feet. Down. And I was like, oh shit, if we take another turn, oh man, this whole thing could collapse on them. They better get the hell out of here. Yeah. That was fun. That was good. Uh, no, that was a yeah. great little adventure. Carcass Crawler, you know what? I haven't read Carcass Crawler. And I should have. I own both of them, and I haven't read them. Yeah, I think there's like four of them out now. And, and I haven't read them because about the time I got Carcass Crawler One, I started playing this game with you, and I was like, "I'm in an old school essentials game, but I'm also running an old school essentials game." Shit, I don't want to read this. <laughs> no. Yeah. Was I right from the murals that if you drop blood in the bowls that it would have? Uh, that would be one the thing. There was actually three different things. Blood was one of them, yeah. 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 I almost had Basil, you know, cut his arm and put some blood in the bowl, but I was like, mm. Yeah, there was some other nasty things in here. Yeah, those yeah. guardians were zombies created from decapitated corpses of people who trespassed on lands claimed by by, by the cult. Long bronze barbs inserted into the hands act as wicked claws, bound to a stake at which they were sacrificed. That was ugly. I mean, eight of them were pretty, well, eight of them with the decent, with our decent front line wasn't bad, but yeah, that damn Hydra is just a complete shredder. The, the only thing that saved us was the fact that you did go burn. Honestly, you took 30 points of damage. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Like that would have killed Karn once and a half. Like well, as, okay. as it stands, he the was down to, he was down by 12 hit points. He was down to nine, he was down to nine hit points. Wow. Yeah, well, okay, but the zombies didn't have a great plus to hit. The yeah. reason I was getting cut up by them is he's got 11 AC in that bird yeah. form. Yeah. But 
Karn and Carmella could have probably kept the zombies off pretty well while the rest of us did range stuff. And we would have gotten eaten a little more that way, but unless unless they rolled really well, they wouldn't have done much. So that Hydra, oh, 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 oh. oh yeah. Yeah. See you later. Bye. You just need yeah. to get a, a custom sized chain shirt for your bird form that like you can transform and then somebody can throw over the top of the, <laughs> the chain shirt. I love it. I love it. It's it's gonna yeah. Okay. We need an iron. Know what Brutus can do. Iron for for my bird form. Brutus drags around a bag. <laughs> I love it. If we can ever find some place we stay in long enough and don't turn, that doesn't turn into a massive bounty on our asses. I mean, really. What are you going to okay. do? That should be sailed. Like, we're wanted everywhere. <laughs> I mean, when two of your party members are just like blatant thieves, it's kind of tough. Apparently, one of them's a one of them's an awfully blatant St. Cuthbert worshiper. Yeah, until Karn dies, you're 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 kind of you know stuck in being hunted, or you abandon him. I think Clintock has a very 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 good chance of uh, moving up a level after this. Oh, nice! Level three. Uh, Clintock should be more than that. Oh. I've been playing as level two. I think I missed a level. Uh, uh, yeah, you missed a lot of levels. Oh, man. Wow. Are you serious? Yeah. Clintock should, Clintock should be level four. Okay. <laughs> he, may, he may have just made level five. Okay. And Felix? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Basil's at a five. Roll well on those hit point advances, on those hit points. You are level four right now. Okay. And what level do you have Felix at? I have him at three, but I may have missed a level as well. Uh, Felix is still at three. Okay. All right. That's going, by the way. Just curious. Carnes uh, should be at third. He's yeah on his way to fourth, which is a long way. He's got a long ways to fourth? Okay. I'm, no, you're, you're well. You're a lot closer than I thought. Yeah, you're a lot closer than I thought. You'll you're gonna get there sooner than sooner than uh, sooner than later. Yeah. That yeah, uh, know. his war his holy war horse would be cool to have, and a BTH of plus two. Yeah. And so I'm thinking we probably only need one or two people on retainer to uh, help us with the yaks, et cetera. Yeah, I was thinking a few retainers with some shields and the form of phalanx, but okay. <laughs> well, no, I mean, everybody we hire is another huge number of units we have to have of food and equipment. Yeah. yeah. And they can't haul it themselves. So everybody we hire is, you know, another yak at a minimum. Sorry. Yak, uh, camel. I think we're using yaks or camels. I got it written down. Yeah, yeah. Yaks. Um, you also, you also have to remember that uh, the retainer or whoever you carry, they may have a bunch of slots, but they ain't gonna have a shitload of gear. You know, they may just have like yeah. their regular equipment. They can carry a bunch of extra stuff for you guys. Yeah, not that obviously not that much, but it's not like you guys because you have like all sorts of crap you want to care right yeah yeah but i mean we want people that if we're diving into a dungeon are going to stay behind and guard our yaks and make sure that you know they yeah. don't wander off and... okay so we do want some retainers i get your point yeah. there yeah okay because you're at 10 bodies plus two the horse and the dog right now, minimal. Okay. Thank you again, and yeah, thanks. have a good week. You too. Right. Yeah. Take Great care. Day. Thank All you. Right. Take care. All right.